Today we're raiding custom Magic the Gathering cards. Let's start it off with Drab Golem. It's a three generic three three golem. Protection from monocolor. Ooh. Okay, uh, so this creature can be blocked, targeted, dealt damage, enchanted, or equipped by anything monocolor. But then it's got vulnerable to multicolor. This creature can't attack. What? How are we attacking a creature? What is this, Hearthstone? We're not playing Hearthstone here. This is Magic the Gathering. Creatures can't attack other creatures. Okay, anyway, can't attack, block, target, or deal damage to anything multicolored. Yeah, we don't, uh, uh, you take out the attack part and the rest of it makes sense. Blocking, targeting, doesn't have any activated abilities, but you could give it some. So anyway, okay. <laughs> it's Yu-Gi-Oh! Well, not quite. You know what, I like this card. I give extra thumbs up for using a font that doesn't require me to squint to look at it. All right, next up we got Remember Sir Chandlar. Remember him, people. It's going to be remembered as a white green instant. Search your library for a legendary creature with no abilities <laughs> and with power less than its mana cost. Uh, put it onto the battlefield that you. What? We put it onto the battlefield? That is broken. This is. Look at this. This is like. It's like the missing legends card of the set. It actually would make a lot of the legends cards back then uh, playable. It would actually make them downright broken. The whole idea is, is this like a Chandelar card or something? Like, did they have this in the game? Did they have any like, I don't know, arena unique type of cards in that Chandelar game? Because like, um, yeah, remember old cards and stand firm. Back then in Legends, they had tons of these cards that were like seven, eight, nine, ten mana in multicolors. But they had no abilities. They were like just stone cold trash. But anyway, remember Sir Chandelar makes them like just straight up broken. Because for two mana, you can put like an 8-4 in play or something like that. They had, they had some custom cards in Chandelar, but only a handful. Interesting. I'd be very curious to know what those cards are. Digital cards that don't exist in real life. The Chandelar edition. They had the only balancing part is that its power has to be less than its casting cost. Yeah, right. The only way to bal the balance. Those cards were... I really can't speak for the time, because I didn't play back then. Back then, if the card cost like 8, 9, 10 mana, it usually had some stupid upkeep cost attached to it that made it unplayable. So maybe the fact that it was like five, four or five colors, three colors, uh, made those vanilla cards playable. Uh, anyway, this card is downright busted. Two mana, instantly put like a creature, from, an eight power creature from your deck into play? No way. Memento Mori! We got a black, 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 one generic, legendary enchantment. Spells and abilities can't prevent players from winning or losing the game. All right, goodbye Thassa's Oracle. Players can't gain life. That's awkward. And at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player loses a third of their life rounded up. Oh no! I hate these math cards where you got you got to think about this. What is one third of ten, and it's rounded up? So basically, it's three rounded up to four. Oh, that sucks. And then I'm at six, and I lose two. Anyway, it is playable. It is doable, as the AI gods would say. Okay, we got our first super chat with Cutman from Oscar, the Godfather, an offer they can't refuse. Remember, you can donate. And also, Majra's owed a few uh, super chats. So I'm looking out for you, uh, Majra. Okay, the Godfather, an offer they can't refuse. Remember, you have to you have to super chat with a, and be able to type in words. Oh, the Godfather, an offer they can't refuse. It's not showing up, damn it. We've it's already been like five seconds and we've already failed. Cards for redditors by at redditors. Well, how about an offer they can't refuse? Nope. The Godfather. Please check it. Oh, here it is. Okay. No, it's just Reddit's fault. Okay, I gotta I gotta get this thing going on in my Discord or something. We gotta abandon Reddit. Reddit is like not helping us here. The Godfather! Um, it is... A black, black, black. It's like Necropotence. A 2-2 human noble. Whenever an opponent draws a card, if it's not their turn, you may draw a card. 
and lose one life. So it's like... But they still draw the card, right? So if they draw... When an opponent draws a card, yeah, they draw a card, you get a, you get a card. An offer they can't refuse. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent may draw a card and lose one life. If they don't, they lose five... Okay. <laughs> It is an offer they can't refuse. If they refuse it, they're screwed. And so we are forcing people to draw cards in exchange for us losing life. It is Necropotence the creature. I love it. Except you still draw cards every single turn. Shouldn't this card probably be balanced by saying you can't draw... You Like you skip your draw step or something? I think uh, it should say like skip your draw... Just to balance it out. Because this thing is just busted. You, look, you don't, you're not even forced to do it. I think this actually might be just crazy broken. It's like worse than Rustic Study. You probably have to adjust it to, you have to draw a card no matter what. And like, if your opponent draws 10 cards, well, do you know what? You're the godfather. You, uh, you flew too close to the sun there. And now you're gonna burn, crash and burn down. And, uh, definitely, probably you should skip your draw step out of this. Curves well with Shieldred? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Shieldred. Yeah, you go play your Godfather. Into your Shieldred. You all saw the Godfather movies. Shieldred was right there, right next beside him. Anyway, I actually think... I think it's broken. I think it's broken. It's a cool idea, though. Like, I love this on offer they can't refuse mechanic. This is great. This thing needs to be a little balanced somewhere, though. I could be wrong. Maybe this is fair because Necropotence is technically... But this is like strictly better Necropotence. You still draw for the turn. You can refuse to draw car cards. See, the Godfather is allowed to uh, to refuse their own offer. But other people... Well, I mean, they could refuse it as well. But it they would be punished for it. Why does it not make a horse head token? I don't know. I'm not that familiar with the, the movies to say so. Moving on in the freebie section, we got bit switch. We got no picture, no picture, no fun. Four mana artifact, tap, change each instance of zero among other cards on the battlefield and spells on the stack to one. Uh, then tap, change each instance of one among other cards on the battlefield and spells on the stack to zero. Amazing. This actually could be supremely broken because like basically anything that has one toughness on the battlefield is dead. You'll, you'll kill them all. Oh, all your one toughness creatures? This is like worse than, what's it called? Um, it's worse. Oh, I wouldn't say it's worse than Engineered Plague, but it's, it is like a repeatable. I mean, you do have to tap to activate it. And on top of that, so like if someone was trying to draw one card or draw one of this, they draw zero instead. And I guess you were, and if they had zero, then they get one. X can't be one. Chalice on one. No, zero. I guess? I don't know if it would change that. Anyway, unique card. And I think it's doable. Maja says, hey, Nikachu, you know what? We're, we're both idiots. The post we were seeing last time was the correct... Well, what was it? How are we both idiots? I'm not an idiot on my own show. Wink, wink. Not on my watch. Okay, give me uh, your ode anyway. So, like, give me some name to something. If I don't find it again, I'm still disqualifying it. Because I can't look up that, like, German letter. For people in the f people don't even know what I'm talking about. You'll find out in two weeks from now. Okay, let's go to our next super chat uh, from Joseph Johnson. Day one of posting Ebron cards. How many days are you gonna do it? Day one of posting. Oops, that was the wrong one. Day one of posting Ebron. Good enough for me. Mark of healing. This is a white. Is it a level up card? Yeah, it's a level up. It's a it's an enchantment aura dragon mark. What the hell are you putting this on? You enchant halfling creature. That is awfully specific around here. Okay, so we've got enchant creature gains plus zero plus three and has lifelink. Level two for uh, two mana. Enchant creature gains tap regenerate this creature. Then uh, gain life equal to its toughness. That's to totally fair. Then chap uh, level three greater. Level two is lesser. Whenever you would take damage, you may instead give enchanted creature minus zero minus X until end of turn, where X is the amount of damage you would have taken. I don't understand the difference. So like you don't take damage, but you basically make the creature weaker that turn anyway, and it's gonna get removed at the end of turn anyway, right? Whenever you would take damage, so it just doesn't technically take damage. Does that matter? 
It actually made if you made this creature indestructible, it would make it pointless. I really have absolutely no idea what the point of that last one is. It could it, it looks like the exact same thing to me. Like it'll have some very niche application, but I don't understand why we're gonna pay three mana for it. Oh, if we Oh, it's taking a bullet for us. Whenever you would take damage, you may have instead Okay. Okay, Mark of the Healing. Thank you for taking a bullet for us. Excellent. Beautiful card. Actually, incredibly fair as well. Freebie section. We got Amara, Shepherd of the Masses. It's a white, green, four generic, two, four elf cleric with Convoke. Gonna get that play in play easily. It's just weird, you know, the elves usually just Convoke the things in play just by casting the cards with mana. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on each tap creature you control, then untap them. That's great. That is actually exactly what the elf players have been looking for. So not all elves tap for mana, I will admit that, but you can just tap all your elves, get Amara in play, put a counter on all of them so they're all beefed up. That's a, like a lord effect that doesn't go away, and then you untap all your creatures. It's a beautiful card. And if you have it as your uh, commander, I mean, you could repeatedly do this over and over again. They kill Amara, Amara comes back. They kill Amara, Amara comes back. You keep buffing up your creatures. Beautiful, I love it. Easy pass. Okay. Next up, we're going to do a... No, hold on, Abe, I'm gonna... Uh, I have to prioritize the big ones. That's the rule around here. You donate suit 20 bucks, you de definitely deserve priority. We'll get to you eventually, Abe. Zatul... Zeratul. Hello, I would like you to take a look at the first cards I ever made. Three dual-sided and one saga. I'm not an MTG player, so it might be a little out of my left field. Okay. <laughs> what do you play? You play Yu-Gi-Oh or something? We got Blood Moon Creatures version 4. What happened to version 1? Okay, Blood Moon Creatures version 4. We got Goblin Shark. By the way, there is a cap at like five cards that I look at per Super Chat. Uh, otherwise, people monopolize everything. So we'll look at the first five. Goblin Shark. We got a Demir for a 1-1 Shark. It's got Island Walk. So far, so good. It is a blue. Goblin Shark gains Hexproof until end of turn. I wish more cards would have that ability. And then if Blood Moon is on the battlefield, transform Goblin Shark. That is so weird. That's awfully... Is that is that the flip? The deeper you go, the more alien it gets. Is this the, the Hemogoblin Shark? It is, Now it has Mountain Walk. Whenever Hemogoblin Shark deals combat damage, put up X plus one plus one counters on uh, you... Sorry, X plus one plus one counters on creatures you control, where X is the damage dealt. If Blood Moon is not on the battlefield, you transform it back to the Hemogoblin Shark. I am actually impressed how well you templated this. Like, it reads exactly like a magic card. For someone who doesn't play magic, you actually templated this better than basically 95% who post on custom magic, the gather the custom magic, the gathering Reddit. Okay, we got the Deep Sea Moray, double Demir for a 2-2 fish with a kicker of a blue. When Deep Sea Moray enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, discard a card, then draw two cards. If Blood, <laughs> Blood Moon is on the battlefield, transform Deep Sea Moray. Did you like play magic once, get screwed by Blood Moon and said, I'm building anti-Blood Moon cards. We're doing it right now. Okay, we got the Blood Eel. Uh, when this creature transforms into Blood Eel, siphon. You may remove any number of plus one plus one counters from any creature and create a blood token for every counter removed this way. All right. Sack three blood tokens. Search your library for a, a card that mentions Blood Moon and add it to your hand. Yeah, this is basically for your, uh, your cards. If Blood Moon is not on the battlefield, transform Blood Eel. That is so weird. But like these cards, I wouldn't say they do nothing if there's no Blood Moon here, but like they're not nearly as good. Demir, 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 Demir for a 2-4 Na Nautilus called the Sturdy Cephalopod. And then uh, War 2 Vigilance. And if Blood Moon is on the battlefield, we transform it again into the Dread Nautilus, which is a Flying Menace 6-6 six, six Horror. Blood tokens you control have tap sack this artifact out of blue. That's actually insane. If Blood Moon is not on the battlefield, you transform it back. I think all of these are pretty playable. Like, what makes them all fair is, like, how often are you going to have Blood Moon on the battlefield? Or I guess you have to, you want to play your own Blood Moon? 
Or maybe this would push Blood Moon decks. And we have the Rise of the Blood Moon. Oh, so you can actually tutor this out because the other card... Does this trigger your other Blood Moon cards? Because it says Blood Moon on the battlefield, but it's literally not Blood Moon. It is not a Blood Moon, unless now Blood Moon is like a subtype to enchantments. We have a Red Rakdos X. Chapter 1. This, card this card's name becomes Blood Moon. Okay, Chapter 2. Create X... Plus one, two, two, black zombie creature tokens. What's X? Oh, X is however you played it. This is... Okay, this card's broken. That card is busted. We're, oh, it's already Blood Moon plus Upside. Then Chapter 3. Search your library for a Blood Moon card. Put it onto the battlefield. Then it just replaces itself. No, you can't have this last one. The first three cards you had, that's fine. That last one, get it out of here to the Yurank. Uh, no, there's no way in hell that that thing is like even remotely playable. Yep, you are a Yu-Gi-Oh player. That's the Yu-Gi-Oh way. Cards that specifically trigger off of very, very specific cards. I guess so. By the way, I'm looking out for your next card, Madre. Anytime you throw it out there, I will, uh, I'll take a look at it. We got me, uh, oh, no, no. We gotta go back to the freebie section. The freebie section! We got Flora Shaman. A green one generic 2-2 two, two elf shaman. They pay a green, tap, discard a land card, search your library for a land card. Oh, I love it! Land Tutor! Reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. This thing is a banger. I think we need more cards like this. I go look for my Strip Mine. I go look for my Maze of Ith. I go look for my Tabernacle. We don't have anything like this, do we? Like, this is the first of its kind. How, how did this card not get... How, did, how does this card not exist up to this point? And it looks like a very green thing to do anyway. It's a creature for crying out loud. And it has an act it has a tapping activated ability. Totally fine. Love it. Love this card. Next up, we got Miyuki. Not sure if this exists yet, but uh, it's me meant for flavor. Post name. The Pierce Piercing Icicle Barrage. It is a snow colorless. That is an incredibly specific casting cost. It's not even one. It's not even one generic. We need colorless, and we need snow. Oh, so it's like icicles attacking in the air. That is pretty unique. Okay, instant piercing ice barrage deals three damage that can be assigned amongst up to three target creatures and uh, or three uh, target players. So you have to template. It's like. Deal three damage divided as you choose among creatures and players. That's all it is. It's like super fire. Uh, and outside of that, I think that's totally playable. We got flavor text. Frost mages are rarer than spark mages and burn mages, but they often have more magical finesse than the latter, even amongst those with equal magical might. Their casting efficiency could use some work, though. Ah, yes. So you make you actually make a little joke on your own casting cost. Damn, that's hard to cast. You need colorless mana and snowman in the same deck. I actually could do it. I'm a merfolk player. We got mutavolts. We got cavern of souls. And I could just have a bunch of snowlands. There is a card like this. There's literally a snow colorless card in existence. This would get banned in standard and pioneer. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, snowman. Like, snowman is easy to cast, though. The colorless part is hard, though. That's, that's what's uh, very hard. Okay, now next to freebie section. Okay, Sand Swept Ruins. Apparently this is a, a cycle. Enters the battlefield tapped. Enters the battlefield, add a white. Add a co uh, Oh, interesting. So when enters the battlefield, you get a white, and then you get nothing. And you get the same thing for you. You get a blue, then you get nothing. You don't, Well, you don't want mana, then you don't get any. If you don't spend that mana the first time, you don't, you don't get mana for the rest of uh, the year. It's just a bunch of wastes. You suck that land dry. Basically, you you ate, uh, it's like a snack. It's a land snack. And what's left is just the wrapper. A very, very sad wrapper. Get only one land. Okay, we're gonna do Madra's. Madra got super screwed last show. So, part two of the... I can't... Okay, I hope it's gonna show up for, the, for just the M. The Sun City part two recap. Part two of... Oh, thank God it showed up. Careful with those special characters. I I don't have you know I don't have the German alphabet on my keyboard. We got the Rio Mancer of Mouse Bay. How many cards do I owe you? Well, I made a note here. 
Custom cards. Majra's owed 10 cards. All right, let's speed run through your cards. We got three mana for a 1-2 Cat Rogue War Wizard. Uh, when you cast Reomancer of the Mouse Bay by its miracle, it gains haste until end of turn. Whenever Reomancer of Mouse Bay deals combat damage to a player or battle, it may deal three damage to any target. Deals a lot more damage p upon the trigger than its power. If you do shuffle it back into its owner's library at the beginning of the next end step, you can also miracle it in play. Okay, that's totally fine. These are all actually pretty balanced cards from last time we saw. Four mana, a cat shaman, a 5-1. Uh, whenever you cast it by its miracle cost, it has haste. Trample, whenever shaman of Mouse Bay deals combat damage to a player or battle. Okay, two, one, four green cat archer creature tokens with reach. If you do shuffle it back into your deck, you can miracle it for two mana. Also, saboteur of Mouse. Ooh, I love that's a banger picture. That is a banger picture. Love it. I wish this was like a secret lair card. Three mana, one, one, cat, samurai, rogue. Uh, you can cast it by its casting cost. It has haste. Bushido, two. Deals combat damage to a player or battle. Return target creature to its owner's hand. If you do, shuffle saboteur of mouse bait into its owner's library at the beginning of the next end step. I figure that would be really hard to pull off. Like, if they have creatures in play. Oh, you can bounce someone else's creature, though. You may return target creature. Oh, so I attack one player and bounce the other one. That's great. This could be really strong, especially if you don't miracle it in play. And we got the Sigil Roar for three mana. It's a kindred instant. You may cast this spell only if you control up to two cat or no creature or no creature. You may cast this spell only if you control up to two cat or no creatures. Uh, uh, oh, so you can't have more than two, if I understand this correctly. Choose one or both. Deals three damage to target attacking creatures. Return all attacking creatures to their owner's hands. Deals three damage to attacking creatures. This actually sounds a bit busted. That sounds really... It's an anger... Oh, maybe it's fine. It's like anger of the gods at instant speed. Only if you control up to two cat or... I don't understand this no creatures. You, you have to have up to two. So, like, this could be a little bit more specific. I don't understand that card. Maybe clean that up. And then we have Aether Roar. Uh, triple Simic. Choose one or both. Prevent all combat damage on... Prevail combat damage until end of turn. Each opponent shuffles into their library a number of creatures equal to the number of creatures that have left your battlefield this turn. So it's a fog. It's like a super fog or something. Each opponent shuffles into their library a number of creatures equal to the number of creatures that have left your battlefield this turn. Okay, so if your stuff dies, you bounce everything back. Very un that's that's a unique card. We can we can give a pass on that. Okay, I will get to the second part of this after the second half of the show. I will get back to you, Majra. I promise. I will do the second half of your series. Okay, freebie section. Um, the Spring Coil Engine. It's a four mana two two construct. It's got double strike. Is it up to two cat creatures or no creatures? Like exactly, yeah, it's that's not clear to me. It doesn't really make any sense to me. It, it's either it's up to two cat creatures. It's like, okay, so it's, what, it's 0, 1, or 2? So you don't need to have, you don't need to specify no creatures on that card. 4 mana, 2-2, two, two, double strike. When it dies, create a 2-2 two, two construct artifact creature token and a 2-2 two, two construct artifact creature token with first strike. It's like Worm Coil Engine, but much stronger. No, well, not stronger than Worm Coil Engine. No, sorry, it's like, a, it's a weird blend of the sad robot Worm Coil Engine. It dies, it splits up, and you got two creatures. But it's a uh, sad robot casting cost. I like it. It's a pass. All right. Next up, we've got Joseph Johnson. Day three of posting. E <laughs> day three of posting Eberron cards. We're just gonna look at this one day at a time. Okay. Let's look up day three of posting Eberron. Eb. One eb. Eberron MTG cards. Mark of Hospitality. Mark of Hospitality, we got a blue green level up card. You people love your level up cards. Enchanted creature. Again, we're enchant. It's a weird aura. It is the first aura of its kind that levels up, as far as I know. I don't know any auras that level up. It's a huge risk, which makes it really fair. Enchanted creature gains tap, create a 0-2 green halfling creature token, and a food token. Totally fair. Uh, level 2 for 2 mana. Lesser. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, its controller creates a food token, and you create a 0-2 green halfling creature token. 
Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, its controller creates a food. Oh, so they get food, you get the token. That's pretty useful. So as people play things, anything, it's like any, whenever a non-token creature, oh, it has to be a creature though, but it's still, it's still very strong. Level three, greater. Uh, whenever you sacrifice a food, you may place a plus one plus one counter on enchanted creature as well as up to two target creatures, then creatures phase out. I don't know why your creatures have to phase out, but yeah, that's fine. Is it good that your creatures phase out? What are you going to use to block? As well as up to two target creatures, then the, then the, oh, just those creatures phase out. I thought your whole board phases out, which could be very, very problematic. Okay, we have a blue mark of dedication. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one as tap scry X, where X is the creature's power. Totally fine. Pay blue, blue, sorry, blue one generic. All players except controller of enchanted creature play with the, uh, their hand and the top card of their deck revealed. Oh, God. All players accept. So basically, it's like a... Sorry, it's like not like a peak. Telepathy. We have telepathy on this thing. Then level three for four mana. Whenever an opponent would draw a card, you may choose to have them instead mill one, then draw a card. Oh, so they have to draw... Hold, but hold on. Can't you just mill them out? I think this is templated wrong. We're not skipping yours, Abe. It's prioritized based on price. I mentioned that a few weeks ago. So, like, basically, if you if you spend, like, 50 bucks, I will get to your super chat first. This thing's broken because it will constantly check, right? So, you may choose to have them mill one, then draw a card. But then when they draw a card, you get the option. Do you want to mill them? Or, or does it have to fully resolve? They mill, then they are going to try to draw a card. And then you get the option for them to not draw, and then they mill. I think, uh, man, I was told replacement effects can't trigger themselves. Replacement can't... I don't know! It's a replacement effect. It can't replace its own effect. Okay. In that case, I will say that it's fine. I'm not a judge. That's the problem. I don't play with these janky, weird cards. Uh, or, you know, I don't try to break... I don't try to break the, the rules here, but... No, it's a replacement effect, so it only happens once. Alright, you weren't lied to, Joseph. I'm lying to you. Look, Platonic Liquid there to console you. Anyway, uh, I'm the idiot around here. It looks like it breaks itself. In that case, the card is good. Freebie section. We all love the freebie section, don't we? Synaptic Seizure. It's a black, black sorcery. Target player may cast one spell as though it had flash. Then discards three cards at, at random. That is weird. So you could, but then you, you know what? Actually, this card sounds broken. Because you could just have them, they still have to pay the mana. So you can just target the player who's tapped out, and then they're effed. That's just as, as simple as that. Okay, you can play a spell as though it had flash. Oh, you're tapped out. Sorry, you just discard three cards, and then they're like, I'm screwed. It's worse than like, uh, what's it called? Um, this is worse than Mind Twist. This is worse than anything. Welcome, Master U Ugwe. First time catching a custom MTG stream. I oh, know everyone loves it. The, they're always on Wednesdays. <laughs> always. Is the intention is that this is a? I think maybe they get the option to play a spell without cast. I think the idea was like, okay, they can cast a spell as though it had flash without paying its mana cost. Then they discard three cards at random. However, that could really backfire. Like if they have three cards in hand, they can play one at with their mana and then the other one for free, right? And then they only lose one card. But maybe that's the only way to balance this. Otherwise, this is just broken. I, I, I just can't get behind this card. Mm. Too broken. Next, Super Chat. I'm going to get you in the second half. I know you're paying 10 but it's actually like $2 a card here. I'll get, I'll get you in the second half, Madra. Because I still have your other thing to get through. We'll, do, we'll get with Shuck Creations. Don't worry. Everyone's Super Chat's going to get done today. Because uh, that's just how it is. What is this? Shock Creations? Oops. Revised. Unruly. Mechanic. Now called Devious. Okay, what is this Devious mechanic you have? We have the Unprincipled Opportunist. It is for one Orzov, a 1-1 one, one human noble. With Devious, whenever another creature dies, you may put a plus one plus one counter on this creature. Do this only once each turn. 
I think you could have it unlimited. Like, what's wrong with having it an unlimited number of times? Or is that broken? Like, through sack abilities. This is totally... This is definitely fair. There's definitely nothing wrong with it as uh, printed. I'm just wondering if there any downside. Because we have carrion feeder, don't we? Carrion feeder is like basically sack a creature, give it a counter. And I don't see how that's any different from unprincipled opportunist. Except it doesn't even sack creatures. I think you could just, I don't even think it needs to trigger once. Or maybe it gets broken if you use this mechanic on other creatures. I don't know. What day of the week do we do AI cards? Also Wednesday, but every other Wednesday. Don't expect it next Wednesday. I'm gone on vacation. Uh, yeah. Sweet card. This, this mechanic will have great potential into the future. Great potential. It's, I'm surprised uh, Wizards hasn't come up with something like this. Yeah, Bacon Catbug has got the, uh, the, the whole, has mapped the entire showdown. It's every other Wednesday. Today should be both custom and AI, AI later. Oh, that's only for people in the evening. Which will end by, uh, the end of, by Friday. Okay, you heard the music. You love the sound of that. You love custom cards, but you also love real Magic the Gathering cards. As we get them from FusionGamingOnline.com. If you're in the Winnipeg area or you want to sell your cards and you're somehow in Canada, send them to Fusion. Plus 35% trade-in bonus. Uh, that is the best deal on... Get the best buck for your cards. Uh, if you, Especially if you're looking to exchange them for other cards. And uh, this is definitely where the first place I look to get all my Magic the Gathering cards from my Commander deck, my Pioneer deck, my Modern deck. Because I love FusionGamingOnline.com. I've had a relationship with them for over a decade. And I also use coupon code NIKACHU when I'm shopping there to get 5% off all my purchases. Which is available to everyone internationally. They ship everywhere. I don't know if they ship to Antarctica, but probably they do. You could try it. If you do that and it succeeds, let me know. We're also going to thank Mana Traders, the premier place for renting Magic cards online. To play any deck, any format you want. If you want to be at the cusp of the competitive meta game, you're, you're playing meta, you're playing with Mana Traders. That's when you got that competitive edge. You play the, the latest Tier 0 deck, and then when it becomes Tier 1, Tier 2, you don't want to play with that stuff. You send it back, you get the best of the best, because you deserve the best. And you can get the best deal by using my Mad Traders link in the description below for uh, using coupon or use coupon code Nikachu underscore one JV to get 10% off your first two months. And back to Reddit world. We love Reddit world. <laughs> Ask for P <laughs> the, the P nine the S. You know, they don't give me custom. I, I I can only take what they randomly give me. They're all happy accidents. Ravager Hydra Engine. We got a white, green, red, zero, one, Hydra Reach Trample. Riot. Uh, modular one. This creature enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it. When it dies, you may put its plus one, plus one counters on target artifact creature. And then Fabricate two. When this uh, creature enters the battlefield, put two plus one, plus one counters on it or create... Two 1-1 one, one Call of Servo Artifact Creature Tokens. Basically combining two artifact-like mechanics together. It also gives it Riot for some reason. So you you give it the choice of what was it Haste or plus one plus one? That's neat. I think that's a I think that's acceptable. Just basically put three common uh, mechanics from three different sets on one card. This isn't custom? Is this a real card? Wizards of the Coast, Ravager, because modular creature is so fun to play. That's not real. This is an adaptation of an alchemy card. Oh, okay. If it's an adaptation, I'll allow it. I have no I have nothing wrong with adaptations. Uh alright, next up we got uh Spectral Maniac. Thank you very much. Um we got what is this? Masquerade Ghost? Mass grade ghost. Apologies for the hard to read text. I had to use a different templating software to escape the wrath of mods. What? Oh, you wanted to full. Yeah, I can't read this thing. What the hell? What is this? 
Okay, we got a black, white, red, two generic, legendary creature, spirit warrior. It's a 3-3. Three, three. When masquerading ghost enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one spirit token with flying. Other spirits you control get plus one, plus zero, and have haste. That is an unusual ability. Those are fast spirits. What are they in a rush for? They're dead. When Masquerading Ghost dies, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a finality counter on it at the beginning of your next upkeep. What does a finality, count, finality counter even do? And there's the spirit that's going to have it. That's actually a banger spirit. I would play with that in paper. When it dies, return it to the battlefield under your... Oh, so what does a finale counter mean? Like, if it dies again, it's, like, gone for good? Something that out effect? Spirits would like this if the colors weren't so off. You can get spirits, I think, in black and white. I don't think there's a lot of red spirits, though. That is a little bit off. That's that's true. Spirits are more in blue, black, and white. More in the Esper colors. Exile it if it dies again. Okay, cool. That's fine. With That is good enough for me. All right. Okay, it's the second half. So let's get to the last five cards of... Uh, Majra's stuff. It's a super chat second half where this show would never end, period. Okay, we got. We did the Ether Roar. Negation Roar! It, it, what is this, a counter spell in Gruel? It is. Uh, Gruel, Gruel, Gruel. Kindred Instant. You can cast this spell only if you control up to two cat or no creatures. I guess it's up to two creatures. But you can't, if you go over two creatures, you can't cast it or something like that? I don't get it. I really don't understand what this means. Counter target non-creature spell, then choose one. Distribute as many charged counters among lands you control, then the mana value of the target. Huh? Distribute as many charged counters among lands you control that then... Oh, I guess equal to the mana value of the target. Put as many plus one plus one counters on target creature equal to the mana value of the target. And then a creature you control deals damage equal to the power to target creature, planeswalker, or battle. You would help you, Majra, if you exclusively played with English cards. I think that's the problem. You play with the German cards. And the German cards have a completely different grammar. And it shows. Mail says you can only have no creatures, one cre cat creature, or two cat creatures to use this card. If you got more, you can't use it. Yeah. So it, it just says that if, only if you control up to two. That's fine. Period. Oh, only up to two. Oh, it's cat creatures. Only up to two cat creatures. Period. That's it. That's all we need. The roar of duplication. Uh, we got for three mana. I don't understand why we can have zero cat. It sounds like this should be a payoff if you have cats on the battlefield. Oh, you're French? Oh, I thought it was. I thought you were German because you used the German with E. Or sorry, A here. Okay. You confused me. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Bonjour. I don't know much French. I'm an abomination to Canada. Okay, Kindred Instant. Cast the spell if you control up to two cat creatures. Uh, copy target pl non planeswalker non creature spell with mana value five or less twice. You may choose new targets for the copy. Okay, that's totally fine. I think you're copying the spell, not countering it. Munch! Uh, we got a green, green, one generic cat with miracle of a green, one generic. Enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact, enchantment, or flying creature. Uh, we have a green one generic sack it destroy target artifact and ch that's a typo here you know how to spell artifact i know you do or maybe you don't you have artifact but we don't have any of those in the game so it's going to have a lot less utility around here activate only during an opponent uh during an opponent's combat phase just sure that's fine i guess that's worded fine at the beginning of your upkeep if you control no creatures scry one i think this is good enough it's a weird card though Ultramarine Komainu. Ko it's a blue one generic. It looks like a cat seal to me. Miracle for a blue enters the battlefield to return target creature to its owner's hand. Um, what? This thing's insane. Oh no, but it's an artifact. It's a two mana bounce spell with upside. Okay, hold on. Maybe it's okay. It pays. I would maybe like to play this type of card. Blue sack ultramarine uh, Komainu. Return target creature to its owner's hand. Activate only during an opponent's combat phase. So you can bounce two cards at the beginning of your upkeep. If you control no creatures, scry one. Do you know what? I actually think this card could be broken because if you uh, this being blinked 
is an abomination. It will constantly just wipe everything on the battlefield. Blink, you like blink the artifact, blink it again, and your opponent will just never get anything on the battlefield. And you get to scry one, you'll scry for gas. I actually, what is even the point of having Miracle? Miracle is supposed to make like an expensive card cheap. This card's cheap up front. This thing should be like, I don't know, five mana for this effect. Anyway, yeah, new, new type of, yeah, new card type leaked. The artifact. Artifact. Anyway, this card, this card's busted. That would be very frustrating to play against. Okay, Gabrielle, happy new year. Happy new year, everybody. Uh, here's a, to a beautiful fu future full of MTG. The card is Wandering Moors. Okay, off to Wandering Moors. Okay, Majora, we're even. I've paid in full. We got a black two generic four four horror. Sinner two. Uh, creature enters the battlefield with two minus one minus one counters. When it dies, put all minus one minus one counters this creature had on another creature. That's a cool ability. And when Wandering Moors enters the battlefield, put two minus one minus one counters on target creature you control. This is totally fine. And when it dies, basically, uh... Hold on. So could you just kill it immediately? And then it like it's a removal spell, so it's like a two-two sort of. This creature enters the battlefield already with two minus one minus one counters, and when it enters the battlefield, you can put in an additional two, so it's effectively a removal spell by itself. Or you can sort of save it, or maybe in some way you can make some utility out of the minus one minus one counters. That is totally that can be value. It's a build around card, people. You build around this damn thing. Okay, next stop we've got. Batley, finally made a stream. Thanks for all the content. You're welcome. I appreciate it, Batley. You didn't mention a card. So what we are going to do is we're going to donate it to the freebie section. We got the Pound of Flesh. How many fists does this guy have? We have one, two, three, four, five. It's an AI generated card, that's for sure. It is, um, it's an enchantment. Opponent's creatures are goaded. Sounds like you're giving it a compliment. Uh, okay, uh, all creatures have myriad. Ugh, what the hell was that? It's like they have to attack, but they can't attack you or something. Oh no, or your opponent's creatures have to attack. Some of that effect. Between two groups of people who want to make inconsistent kinds of worlds, I see no remedy but force. Oliver Wendell Holmes. So everything is goaded, which means what? It, like it can't attack you, and I think myriad makes says they have to attack. Myriad is copied and attacks uh, each opponent. What does that mean? We like copy all our creatures or something? We make one copy of everything on the battlefield? I don't know. I, I, I'm going to assume this card works. I really don't know how Myriad works. So I'm just going to assume that this is a legal Magic the Gathering card. Almond, thank you very much for your super chat. Show idea, classic MTG mechanics that should make a comeback. Also, post title, Nerfed Tolarian Academy. I'll keep that idea in mind. Nerfed Tolarian Academy for Tron decks. Thanks for the show, you're welcome. The Nerfed One Ring, post title, Nerfed Tolarian Academy. It doesn't show up. Ruins of Talarian Academy. Do I see an almond up here? How about Talarian Academy for Tron decks? It's not showing up, almond. Sorry, you don't exist here. Is there a problem? How have I put nerfed? I have a feeling like you spelled something wrong. Talarian. The nerfed one ring. No, I can't find it. I'll keep you around uh, if you can fix the title. I'll look it up. Next, we have Ga uh, Gabrielle. Let's put the second one already. The Fae Innkeeper. I think we're going to move to Discord. And then I can just look for them in my Discord. Because this is like happening way too often. We can't find your card. Well, even if you misspell the card in my Discord, I'll probably find you. Okay, we got the Fae Innkeeper. It is a green 1-1. One, one. Uh, it's a fairy peasant. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may pay... Sorry, you may... Okay, so you may pay X. <laughs> you, you have... You may may. Don't you people proofread your cards? 
Okay, we're holding that. That did not deserve a good sound effect. If you do up to X target, creatures you control get plus one plus one and gain vigilance until end of turn. That's totally fine. Someone mentioned just recently on another show, like fairies used to be green and then they like moved to blue and black, but their OG, their origin story was completely in green. So that's how you humans make bread. We usually just make it appear with the magic. Yeah, oops. So it happens to the best of us. I guess they don't have uh, auto-correct on these custom Magic the Gathering cards, am I right? We had Artifact. Oh, actually, this is not a... This is not a... This technically is spelled correctly. The grammar just sucks. Okay, next up, we've got Platonic Liquid. Uh, Palpatine, Supreme Chancellor. Ooh, I'm excited. Palpatine, uh, comma. Supreme Chancellor slash Darth Sidious Emperor from Platonic Liquid. An outdated coffee and MTG meme. <laughs> How old is this? 26 days ago. Okay, we got blue, black, one generic, one three human noble. That's Palpatine, all right. And he loves democracy. Exactly. Exactly. We all love democracy the exact same way Palpatine does. Whenever you cast a spell that targets only a single opponent, you control how that player votes until <laughs> the beginning of your next end step. Then for black, 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 uh, you pay six life. Destroy all knights. Uh, oh, Jedi knights? Is that what it, we're talking? Is that what we're talking about here? Uh, then starting with you, each player votes for freedom or empire. If empire gets more votes, transform Palpatine, Supreme Chancellor. Otherwise, you lose the game? What? So, hon, if the knights gets, uh, so, hold on, if, if people vote for freedom, you lose? What's the other side, then? So, you get voted out! And then, so, if everyone votes for the dark side, we got Darth Sidious, the Emperor. Uh, it's a 6-6 six, six human warlock. When this creature transforms, in, transforms into Darth Sidious Emperor, you become the monarch. You control how players vote. Oh, God. Why would anyone want to vote for this? It's a red, black, one generic. Uh, the ability is Darth Sidious deals three damage to our creature. Its controller discards a card. Activate only if Darth Sidious is attacking. That is hilarious. I love it. It's, it's, very, it's a huge flavor win. It's a super, it's a, like a super dangerous card to play. Like your opponents could just choose to uh, vote you out of the game. We vote for freedom, you lose. GG. Hold on, but you can vote? Hold on, whenever you cast a spell that targets only a single opponent, you control how that player votes. Oh! Okay, forget it, you want this card maybe broken. I like it anyway. It's gonna be a, it's gonna get a pass. So that's the idea, you gotta make sure you cast a spell that targets only a single opponent. Oh, you have to cast a few spells that target them, and then activate the ability, and then you control that you vote. You will vote for the Empire. You will do it. Execute Order 66. Was it really 66? Execute Order 69. Wild card. I love it. Almond, did you come uh, to save your thing? Or did you come and go? Did Almond leave? I think Almond sent the super chat and then beat it. So we move on to Bacon Catbug. A couple of white and green alternative universe Lilianas. One planeswalker, one creature. A couple of white and green alternate universe Lilianas. In another world where Liliana was not seduced by the dark side did not ever meet Palpatine. We've got Liliana's Life Majesty, a white, green, three generic, uh, five loyalty Liliana. Plus one, create two, one, one green and white cat creature tokens with reach and lifelink. Was she a cat person? Maybe she had some black cats in art. Minus three, create a two, two green and white human cleric creature token with lifelink for each creature card in your graveyard. And then minus seven, create two, four, four green and white angel creature tokens with flying and lifelink. Then destroy all creatures without lifelink. That is totally fair because that is very hard. Well, it's actually not too hard to achieve. Wait, you go to six, seven, then go minus. Uh, how big of a super chat was this? It was like a $5 one, wasn't it? Okay, let's look at a few more. We'll look at three. Liliana Cat Lady. So she is a crazy cat lady in alternate universe. We got Selesnia, 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 and X for two, three cat human cleric. 
enters the battlefield to create X21 white cat creature tokens named Savannah Lions. She was she created the Savannah Lion. She was I don't know, she uh, domesticated the damn thing. If X is five or more, create a young hero roll token attached to each of them. And we got a cat token. These arts are insane. Created with AI. Angel also created with AI. I'm surprised that they're cool with AI cards. It's Bing Image Creator AI. They're so harsh and cutthroat on this custom Magic the Gathering uh, place. Okay, let's go through a let's go through another uh, series from Majra. First five cards, part three of the Mao's Bay. First five cards of part three of the M. Uh, first five. Oh, sorry. Part three. It's just called part three of the Mouse Bay. Part three of the Mouse Bay. If you didn't see the previous part, ignore it. Oh, no, we're gonna. Don't worry. We're gonna look through them all. Okay, the first five. Then I might as well just keep this here, so we get through the second half later. Okay, we got uh, the Mouse Bay. It is. Oh, this this weird casting cost. Let's just say it's four mana or seven mana. Oh, it's Yu-Gi-Oh. We got so much text on here. I should ban small font on this on this thing. I, I'll make you. I'll punish you all. I'll just go like that's small. I can't read that. Okay, but I can read this. Legendary enchantment. Whenever a cat you control is shuffled into your deck, choose one that hasn't been chosen this turn. You could draw a card. The mouse bay deals damage to any target equal to the sh uh, shuffled cat's power, which was actually pretty small usually. Or put a charge counter on target land you control. You can put. What are you going to do with the charge counters? Whenever you tap a land you control with a charge counter for mana, you can remove any number of those counters and add mana of that color uh, equal to that land for whatever that land could produce. That's fine. We got the mouse bay sanctuary for exactly seven mana. Cost X less to cast, where X is the number of. Creature, creature each opponent controls. So creatures. Okay, we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna make sure we look that up. Hold on, this is called Urza's Engine Room. Why didn't you give me the post? I don't see Urza's Engine Room here. I see Urza Ultimate Engineer, Urza's Titan Engine. Like, are you sure it's there? You look it up. You look it up, Balm, and make sure that it's literally there still. Okay, anyway. Okay, Mouse Bay Sanctuary. Um, oh, is it on new? Okay, I'll look up new. That's fine. Okay, what is this card? Cost X less to cast for the creatures our opponents control. When a creature deals combat damage to you, if it's not your turn, choose one that hasn't been chosen this turn. You can shuffle to our creature that have been dealt damage to you in their, to their, into their owner's library. Uh, Mouse Bay Sanctuary deals damage equal... Uh, to target creature that has been dealt damage to you equal to its power or you gain five life and put a shield counter on target cat you control These are all reasonable car uh, abilities mouse Bay sigil for four mana. It's an enchantment We got two you love birds in the art if mouse Bay sigil is in your opening hand. Okay. It's like a saying it's uh, what's it called? It's a ley line you can have it uh, on the battlefield. It should be called ley line of mouse Bay each non-land card from your library and spells you control that does not already have Miracle, gain Miracle. The Miracle cost is equal to the mana cost of minus four? I guess that is okay. So it just basically turns all your non-Miracle cards into Miracle cards. The Change of Destiny. We got a blue one generic instant. Uh, it also has Miracle of a blue. Why? The, like, it, it's not that much cheaper. The whole point of Miracle is to make a very expensive card very cheap. Uh, you, this card is literally two mana. Draw a card, then put a card from your hand on, uh, on the top on the top of your library. Okay, so if it uh, if you cast it for its Miracle, you draw two cards and put a card from your hand on top of your library instead. Okay, I see. So there is like a bit of a mechanic to the Miracle thing, which is fine. I actually don't think that's broke. It's like a cantrip that you have to play immediately. Uh, Vengeful Law. Actually, you know what? Draw a card, and then uh, put a card from your hand on top of your library. Okay, so the first half sucks. The Miracle is strong. I bet this card would be really strong in Legacy, stacking with, like, Ponder and Brainstorm. Because that, like, nets cards, right? It's like you just draw two cards. Ponder just ponder and Brainstorm replaces cards. 
Okay, uh, Vengeful Lava Geyser. We have a red one generic sorcery. Can be cast as though it had flash if a cat died this turn. Uh, deals four damage to our creature Planeswalker. If the target should die this turn, exile instead. Also totally fine. Okay, hold on. Let's look up the Urza's Engine Room card again. No. Okay, well, let's go back to Custom Mat. Like, how do we get to Custom Magic? Let's look at new. I was told... Oh, here's Urza's Engine Room. Urza's apostrophe you know what the apostrophe probably got me reddit is so stupid like that okay urza's engine room it is a land it's an urza's i don't think that i don't i don't think urza's is like a land type but okay so we can tap to add a colorless to our mana pool also tap add a colorless for each artifact you control activate only if you control an urza's mine power plant and urza's tower uh oh okay so if you have all those on the back it's like the super this is like super win more i mean like yeah you could have this if you want you already have seven mana what you need more than that urza's is a land type no i think urza is a land type urza's is not a land type you show me an urza's urza apostrophe s is Urza's is a land? Are you kidding me? We're getting to the bottom of this, right? You give me a certain, give me a land. Hold on, let's let's go. Uh, Urza's tower. Well, I'll be effed. It is, I guess, Urza's is a land type. Maybe I'm in. I am incredibly wrong here. Hmm. Okay, whatever. This is the weirdest way to be wrong today, but uh, I guess I am. <laughs> this should not make sense, but whatever. Yeah, Urza's factory, Urza's tower, Ur yeah, land Urza. It just looks really weird out of place. So shouldn't it be like land Urza's room or something, or Urza's engine, something to that effect? Yeah, there's Urza's saga, I guess. Yeah, but Urza's what? Anyway, I guess it should be. Ur we should just add something over here. Anyway, it's a complete win more card, but like, if because if you already have like the whole Tron thing assembled, then I don't even know what you need this thing for. If you want extra mana, sure, you can have it. Your opponents, it, it, in some ways, maybe will just win the game faster. Okay, I feel bad for Abe. Abe been waiting here for forever. Let's give Abe super chat. The Jace in Genius Minds. Abe's a loyal viewer anyway. Okay, Jace. Ingenious Minds. I also like how he, uh, Abe gave me the card immediately before anything else. There's a lot of Jace cards here. Ooh, we got a menacing looking Jace on our hands for three mana. Just exactly how Jace used to be. It's a four loyalty. Jace, the legend rule doesn't apply to Jace Planeswalkers. Why not? Well, hold on. Why would that matter? So, hold on. so, wait, you can play, like, infinite Jace and Genius Minds? Is that the whole point? Uh, we have a plus one. Up to one target creature gets minus three, minus zero until your next turn. Scry one. Minus four. Draw two cards. If you control four Jace and Genius Minds, you may cast non-land cards from your hand without paying their mana cost until end of turn. Honestly, that's an achievement unlocked. And also, just going minus four kills off the Jace period. So, I actually get, get behind that. I also have no idea how you're going to get all four Jaces on the battlefield. You're just it's, you're going to have to clone them. Um, omniscience, if you have all four of them, eh? And they all have to be alive after you go minus four. It is very... That is an achievement unlocked, if you ask me. Oh, you combined two arts. Two arts to create the Super Jace. The fact that it doesn't give you omniscience as an emblem is crazy. Hold on, what is it? Oh, yeah, it's only until end of turn. That is weird. I guess you intend on winning that turn anyway. Abe probably has something in mind how to win immediately. So, like, maybe maybe it's balanced in that way, in my opinion. Okay, we... Okay, I got you, Almond. So, we got Almond. Robert! What do you got for us, Robert? The name of the post is Bustin, make, Bustin Makes Me Feel Good. Those are, so, isn't it like so weird how there's so many songs and movies that you completely interpret differently once you're an adult? Bustin makes me feel good. I don't see it anywhere. Bustin. How about, we're going to put makes me feel good. I don't see it. 
Hold on, maybe it's new. Is it new? Let's go to the new section. Uh, let's go back to custom magic. Is it new card? Is it a new card? Where's your busting? I can't find your card, Robert. Where is your card? Busting makes me. Oh, I didn't sort by new. Beehive, Ghostbusters. Oh, was, Go was Ghostbusters the one? Oh, here. Oh, you put Bustin. See, here's the here's the deal. You wrote Bustin makes me. Whoops. Uh, Bustin makes me feel good. But you have to put that like apostrophe that you had over here, or else it doesn't know. It's so stupid. Reddit is just dumb. I should have just put bust in and we would have found it. Okay, anyway, we found it. Found it one way or another. Okay, we've got a red, black, blue. So we have greenless Wooberg for a 4 4 human. Protection from spirits. Which I guess is weird. Okay, and then who are you gonna call? The Ghostbusters! Alright, whenever the Ghostbusters enters the battlefield or attacks, each opponent mills three cards. For each card milled this way, that player creates a 1 1 black spirit creature token with flying. So what? It creates a problem? Is that what it's going to do when the Ghostbusters enters the battlefield? It, it's like, uh, you know, it's some forms of marketing. They create they create a problem or create the problem in your mind, and then you have to you have to call a business to solve it. Then Bustin makes me feel good. Whenever the Ghostbusters deals combat damage to a player that controls a spirit, destroy target spirit that player controls, and you create two treasure tokens. Yeah, so we so we brought the spirits, we destroy the spirits, and then we made our uh, opponent pay for it. Totally fair, that's for sure. I'm guessing the show will be over soon, so hi, bye. No, this show is going to be over in like another hour or something. You ever been part of a custom custom live show? These things go on for absolutely forever. I have like 15 super chats to get through. I am jailed by chains to the super chats. Okay, let's get through the another half of... Uh... Uh, Majra's thing. Majra has the fa the last five cards of part three of the Mouse Bay. Like the previous one, you can see them after part two. Uh, okay, so we've got Vengeful Lava... Gu so we did the Vengeful Lava Geyser. Now we have the Ultramarine Disappearance. And that is a 10 out of 10 banger art. Love the art. So you have some great arts on these cards. Yeah, the Chains of Cold Hard Cash. That's how I should call it. <laughs> I am chained by cold hard cash. Digital cash, but cash nonetheless. Okay, blue one generic instant. Uh, put target non-blue creature on the bottom of its owner's library. That's insane! Oh my goodness! Is this fair? I would love this card. Oh my god, print it please. Like, blue doesn't have this sort of hard- Like, that's basically hard removal. That's even better than removal. It's not as good as Exile, because they put it back in their damn deck, but that is so damn strong. I would love this card. Print it immediately. I will pull out my wallet. Where's my wallet? I need my wallet. I will buy all the Ultramarine Disappearance. Yeah, it's like blue removal. Got incredibly good. It's like it doesn't even go to the graveyard to be reanimated. It's like it is gone. It's cute and too good. Would be an Orzov card. It's very blue, honestly. Like, blue does that. Blue tucks things away. It goes on top or the bottom of libraries or whatever. Um, so it's not outside the color pie. But for two mana? Blue Doomblade? Exactly. Shut up and take my money. It's probably broken. I don't think wizards would ever print something like this. Don't walk alone in the coastline, young princess. The night is dark and full of terror. You're gonna... Don't pet the cats. Apparently they'll take you away with them. Anti Thassa's Oracle tech. Would it? You play Thassa's Oracle with an empty library, you put it back in your. Like, you still have two devotion. Or no, no, oh, no, you don't actually. Oh, you have zero devotion. Assuming Thassa's Oracle is the only one here on the battlefield. Yeah, that's true. It should be sorcery. That would probably balance it out, actually. If it was sorcery, that would probably make it fair. For two mana, instant's too strong. Yeah. I mean, I'm with you. I want to see this exist, but I know they would, like, never print this. They would never give a blue Doomblade. Yeah, non-blue. Well, same thing like Doomblade. Non-black, right? 
Okay, Rav is Miracle. Green, green, blue, blue, sorcery. Miracle for is it and a Simic. Add up to two legendary enchantment from your library and or graveyard to your hand. Exile Rava's Miracle. Uh... How does this work? Okay, it's four mana, then it's reduced by two. Add up to two legendary enchantments from your library and or graveyard to your hand. Oh, so basically search your library for two legendary enchantments from your library or graveyard to your hand. To your, and put and put them into your hand. Then you exile this card. That is fine. It's basically a super tutor. Then we have the Ultramarine Rebuke. Uh, it's for a blue, blue, one generic. Instant, choose one. Counter target spell or shuffle target creature into its owner's library. Now that is a lot more fair. And you have Entwine. What does Entwine do again? I think you can like you well, you can get multiple instances if you pay, pay the Entwine to cost or something like that. It's something like Replicate. Uh, I don't know exactly, but uh, this actually is way more fu fair. Shuffle target creature into Zona's li library, and I might play this too. But it's it's a lot tougher because for three mana, even a removal spell for three mana, even in blue, it's tough. But it's a hell lot better than bouncing it to your hand. You know what? I'm tired of this crap where oh, bounce the card to your hand, bounce the card. No, just get rid of the card. Give it. I want blue to have hard removal. Damn it! Everyone has hard removal except blue. It's not like even it's not even like counter spells work anymore. Counter spells are a way of the past. They all suck now. We have the best counter spells available to us, and they do nothing. So basically, triple blue for one for another shuffle is actually really strong, though. Oh, to hit two cards, I don't care. How like how many entwined? Like you can do it additional cost. You get to choose both of them. Oh, cool. So it's cryptic command. It's totally cryptic command. That's fine. Ultramarine Katana. We got a blue equipment. Gets plus one, plus one. Has Bushido one. Or oh, bring Bushido back. Uh, has Vigilance of Blue. Uh, creature enters the battlefield by its miracle cost. You may uh, attach Ultramarine Katana to it. Equip for two. Holds has Miracle for zero. And when Ultramarine Katana is cast for its miracle, draw a card. If the card drawn has Miracle, you can cast it for its miracle. This is a little too wordy. I don't like how many words are on it, to be honest. I think you should simplify these cards. It's like, oh, if you draw a card, it has Miracle. Oh, it also has Miracle. Yeah, like everything Miracle's off of its Miracle cost. Maybe it's fine. And it's also one mana. Whatever. I think it's a little too much. The Ultramarine Fan. Equipment. Uh, equipped creature gets plus one, plus zero. Equipped creature has fight, flight, if it's blue, I'm assuming. Uh, whenever a creature... Can you just say it has flying? The creature attacks as though it has flying. Okay. Just why not just give it flying? Or you just want it only to fly when it's attacking? I think there's a better way to word that one. Mm. When a creature enters the battlefield... But here's the thing. We already have templates for a lot of this stuff. It's just like when this creature attacks, it gains flying. That's it. We don't need like the creature attacks as though it had flying. You just give it flying while it's attacking. That's it. Okay. Uh, equip for one. Uh, and whenever it's cast for its miracle cost, draw a card. Then if the card drawn has miracle, you can cast it for its miracle. So basically, it's a, you want to make it a free draw. Miracles for zero, and you draw a card off of it. That card, I don't know. Too, a lot. Of, we got a lot of words. Small font. Too many abilities. We also have a typo over here. Templating is awkward. And uh, two, uh, the extra abilities, I, I'm not a fan. Isn't it attacking if it's defending? Nope. When you're blocking, it does not have anything. The creature is attacking as though it is flying. So, yeah, it's, uh... You don't attack anything when you're defending. You're just defending. Okay, next up. Steve Cooper with Rax Whip. Second and third cards. Okay, let's look up Rax Whip. What the hell is this? What if I look up Rax? Is that fine? I can't find that. Steve Cooper, are you around here? Is this like another card I have to see on the front page? To the front page. Do we have Rax Whip around here? Rax Whip. I don't see anything Rax Whip around. I assume you posted this. I have no idea when you posted this. 
I found it by searching just R A C C S. That's exactly what I'm doing. Oh, okay. I, I didn't work the first time. It works the second. That is so weird. Reddit is going down to crap. Okay, so you want the second and third cards. You know what? You super chat for so many other people. Let's just do all the cards. We got the Rack Cycler. Oh, did we do this one before? It's a four mana one three. Whenever an artifact is sacked or destroyed, you may gain one life. And whenever an artifact is sacrificed or destroyed, you create a tap treasure token. This ability triggers only once each turn. An artifact cycling. Pay five mana, discard this card, search your library for an artifact. Oh, and it's a tutor. I think we did that one. We got the Rack Fabricator. It's a blue, blue, three generic uh, for a two, three raccoon artificer. We have ward three. This creature can't be copied. Okay, that's awkward. But who needs to copy it? Because it is the one, is the raccoon of all raccoons. It's a blue, blue axe tap. Create a token that's a copy of up to one target non-token artifact you control. Mana value X or less and above. Mana value zero. Activate only once each turn. What the hell did that... Whoops. What the hell did that even say? <sighs> okay, I'm paying blue, blue X. I'm creating a token that's a copy of up to one target non-token creature I control with mana value X or less and above mana value zero. I have no idea what that means. That is just like a bunch of baloney to me. Whenever you create one or more artifact tokens, you may draw a card. If you do discard a card, this trigger, this ability triggers only once each turn. Yeah, I can get behind that ability. I have no idea what that second ability does. Why is it even up to one? Like, so basically you want to trigger it for no reason? X can't be zero. It says up to one. X can be zero. It says create a token that's a copy of up to one target non-token creature you control. Mana value X or less. And above, so oh, sorry, X the zero. Okay, so the the X can't be zero, but the token can be. Uh, it's up to one creature. I got detailed, so it can't be abused for moxin and stuff. Why not? Who cares? Make to make mox. It's not even that broken. You tap your rack fabricator to make a to make a moxin. I don't think that would be like what you're gonna make a mox diamond. It's like useless. Mox Diamond. It's not like you're playing with Mox Jet or Mox Sapphire in your game, right? Okay, so I, I think I get it now. Um, honestly, you should probably adjust it so you can copy Moxin. Like, if you copy, for example, even Mox Opal, it's legendary. It'll just die. I don't think it would be broken if you copied Moxin, is all I'm saying. So if you fix that, it would be good. And the last, we've got the Rack Destroyer. That's a big raccoon. It's out for blood. Maybe it has rabies. It is a black three generic 4-1 raccoon barbarian. With death touch, artif uh, artifact, annihilator one? What? Whenever this creature attacks, defending player sacrifices an artifact. That's not annihilator one though. It's like whenever this creature attacks, defending player just sacks a permanent. I think you have to just give it its own like raccoon one or something. Uh, and then, you know, it's basically Annihilator for... You could, I guess you could create a, an ability called Annihilator for Artifacts 1. That would make some sense. Rack Destroyer attacks each combat of Fable, and whenever an artifact is put into a graveyard, each opponent loses one life, and you gain one life. This ability triggers only once each turn. Then you just have to change the Annihilator 1, and the rest of it is fine. Because that is not a Raccoon ability. Spectral Maniac! Thank you very much for your super chat. Starting a fun for the glasses Nikachu will need after reading all these cards. Thanks for all the content and the community you've created. You're welcome, Spectral Maniac. I'm glad you love the show. So we will donate this to the freebie section. Well, we gotta go to... HOT! Well, where's a card that we didn't see? The Chitin Dancer! It's a black 1-1 one, one human wizard with menace. Sacrifice Chitin Dancer. Another target creature gains Undying until end of turn. That is so weird. Yeah, okay. Simple and elegant. Save something that was going to die. It's like, it's like a weird way of saying, like, sack this creature gets regeneration. Except, it actually does die, but it comes back with a plus one plus one counter. D oh, did it say Artifact Annihilator? Oh, that's true. It does say art of... Okay, then it all works out 100%.
For some reason, I thought it was like an artifact. It was like death touch, artifact, comma, annihilator one. Uh, okay, that's fine. That works out. That is two thumbs up from me. Okay, it's time, time to get through all the $2 super chats. We got some 124C with uh, Nick, Ni, comma, thank you for showing the comma, Ni, cuz, chapeau, version 2 from 124C. Damn it! Chap, chap, o. I am spelling this correctly as best as I can. Is there, was there one less apostrophe? No. No. Was this spelled correctly? Is something wrong with Reddit maybe? Well, maybe I should go back to the original spelling. So we couldn't load the search results, maybe because it doesn't exist? I keep retrying. Explain yourself to some 124C. <laughs> what is this name? I know, exactly. Try on Google? I'll try not to try on Google. Okay, maybe we'll try on Google. Let's see what Google shows. Okay, it actually is the first uh, first thing that showed up. Google, one zero. Reddit, zero. Google is the supreme overlord. Okay, we got Nikachu's, or Nika's Chapo, or Chapo. I don't know how to pronounce this thing. Okay, we have a three generic. Uh, yeah, we have a three generic artifact. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent exiles the top card of their library. Whenever a land is exiled in this manner, place a time counter on Nika's Chapo. Remove 10 time counters from Nika's Chapo. Each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into the library and then draws... Oh, only three cards? Well, what happened? Maybe that's not a whole lot of cards here. What are all these time counters for? Being your upkeep, each opponent exiles the top card of their library. Whenever land is exiled in this manner, we place a time counter on this. This has got to be like in reference to something. <laughs> Nikachu does have a hat. This could be yeah. Uh, this could be my hat in uh, yeah. Super slow mill. Well, the idea is like you know we get we each player draws up to three cards later. Hmm. Yes. But does it Diblik? Arkham, Dagson probably. Nika no Pika. Is this like a user that I don't know about here? Anyway, totally fair. Totally fine. Everyone and everyone draws a card in the end. Is this for the guy who built decks to time out matches? It's possible. Hats off to Nika's chapeau. <laughs> I didn't want to call it Nika's hat because it sounds like a it sounds like a shat. I guess so. That's possible. Not not nothing wrong there. Okay, next up we are going to. Aquain Bay. Here's five bucks for a person who wants to show a custom card or freebie section. I uh, love the show, Nikachu. Thank you so much for your super chat, Aquain Bay. I appreciate it. Okay, let's go. We're going to donate to the freebie section. To all these people. I get comments like, yes, my card was seen by, you know, the Nikachu stream. I'm curious to know how many people from the subreddit even know who I am. I'm, I'm guessing like a, a pretty good chunk of them. We have a black, 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 three generic Degiza. Uh, Leech Doctor. It's a 5-3 zombie doctor with ward. Sack any number of permanents with total mana value 2 or greater. Any number of permanents? Can't you just sack 0? Sacrifice any number of permanents with total mana value 2 or greater. Oh, but you have to... Okay, so if I sack 0, then they don't have a value of 2 or greater. So I have to sack at least 1. So someone is allowed to sacrifice their whole board! For some reason, to pay for the ward for this thing. That is such a weird ward. Whenever a creature you control dies, uh, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control with a finality counter on it. Um, whenever a creature you control is put into an exile from the battlefield, return it to its owner's hand. Okay, sure, whatever. I really don't get it. So long, Mr. Deadhead. See you next time. Okay, next up we've got 
Another super chat from Steve Cooper. I'm going to fix up the racks for 2.0 post next time. Also got to go for now. See you guys later. All right. See you, see you later, our raccoon fam aficionado, Steve Cooper. And with that super chat, we will give it to another freebie. We got bad aim. A white, one generic. Uh, instant. If a creature would deal damage to you. A creature you control, or a planeswalker you control this turn, you may have it deal that much damage to you, a creature you control, or a planeswalker you control instead. Oh! So this is like the opposite of that other card that we saw earlier, where the creature was going to take damage for the damage that was dealt to you. Instead, now you can take damage for the damage dealt to your creature. Totally fair. I think it's totally fair. It was a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament and he has a fedora. Is this like in reference? Hold on, where is that? Is this the chapeau is supposed to be in reference to uh, a Yu-Gi-Oh card that already exists? I'm just uh, I'm just going to assume. It's like re yeah, redirect but not at your opponent. So redirect the other way around. Okay, next up we got Summon 2-4. Oh, we did uh, this one. Okay, Smelly Squid with 3x plus 1. Isn't this like an unsolved problem or something? I swear I saw like a YouTube video that was like the problem that has yet to ever be solved or something like or the unsolvable solved problem puzzle thingamabob. It's very pretty. We have a white white red 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 two generic uh, or a curse enchant player each upkeep if enchanted players life total is even curse of col collation uh, deals damage to them equal to half their life total. If their life total is odd, they gain life equal to twice their life total plus one. What? What? Okay, what is going on here? Can I ever, like, can I ever die? Am I actually, is my life total going down perpetually or is it going up? Okay, hold on. If, my, if it's even, my it deals damage to them equal to half their life total. So I go from 20 to 10. Then if the life total is odd, which it's not, then it goes to five. They gain life equal to twice their life total, then I go to 11. Then, then when I go from 11, I will gain twice, go to 22, then 23, then 23, 26. Hold on, but doesn't that, that's weird. You can't die from this card alone. So basically it, you never die. That problem you are talking about is P versus NP. I have no idea what the hell that means. What, probability versus not probability? Can't remember what the P and NP means in uh, in math. It depends. So I'm assuming you are you are invincible. We are still here, Tommy Sins. We are still here. It's called the Collatz Sequence. It's a stats theorem. What is it again? I took like quite a few stats classes. Probab no, it's not probability. The P doesn't stop. Set. Oh no, no, it's the yeah, it's. Oh yeah, it is. P stands for probability. And the NP, I don't remember what that stands for. P is polynomial time, and NP is non-deterministic polynomial time. But that is not what this card is about. Okay, thank you very much. Different letters mean different things. Uh, in different forms of math. Nerds in chat today. We're all nerds. We're all geeks, dorks, and nerds, depending on what you uh, resonate with. I personally identify as a geek. Okay, moving on. Uh, okay, is this... This card's neat. It's for the math people out there. Uh, it's, I don't see... It doesn't look dangerous so it is definitely doable okay uh smelly squid you've got thoughts on inverted mana costs thoughts on inverted mana costs i have no idea how that's gonna work was this in this is some sort of uh inception or what the hell it's dark mana Reminds me of Pokemon where they when they came out with dark energy. Oh, we got dark forests It's a 2-2 Drake dark force can be paid with this mana of any type except green and colorless uh, This card is every color except green. Oh, so you can pay blue you can oh so you can pay with anything except the green and colorless so blue white red and Blue white red and black even though this looks black, it sort of messes with my head. Okay, it's got flying. I think it should be gray, so that it doesn't mess me up with uh, black. Anyway, yeah, I think it's totally fine. 
<laughs> I don't know. So what is it's basically anti Wooberg. Oh, so it's like trying to get a sorry, it's trying it's like trying to pay for a greenless Wooberg card without having like four or more colors or like the hybrid color ideas. It's actually an amazing concept. Really messes with your head though. I think there's an alternate way of like representing this, I think. How to fetch? Well, I don't think it would have anything. This has nothing to do with fetching. I mean, you fetch for your re you fetch for an island and you pay like double blue for this card. That's how it would work. If you get a 2-2 flying drake out of this. Cool card, very cool concept. Bacon cat bug with gathering ba gathering the magic version version 2 cleaned up the wording. Gathering magic. Sorry, gathering the magic. Version 2. Damn it! Why are we having so much trouble? Oh, I'm gonna put... We gotta Uncle Google it today. I'm telling people we're gonna move to Discord. This keeps up. We're gonna move to Discord, damn it. Is this your thing? Gathering. Yeah, there is nothing wrong with your uh, there is nothing wrong with your post. You did it right. That's for sure As far as I as far as I can tell okay, we've got a uh, very colorful card actually This is a 10 out of 10 design. I love the full art to this thing should be worth big money uh, Anyway, we have a green colorless X sorcery for each color of mana spent to cast the spell return a card from your graveyard to your hand What? Exile gathering the magic. So basically it's a huge regrowth for each color in your deck, right? So for like you cast Wooberg and then you just bring that many cards back from the graveyard to your hand. The tapestry of reality is woven anew by those who dare to harness the whispers of the mystical realms. Definitely a huge pass. Cool card. It's like restock. It's regrowth. It's a super regrowth. I mean you're gonna pay a lot of mana for it. I mean, you have to pay at least a green colorless and then like four more mana in X in order to, uh, or I guess five. Five more mana to get the full thing off. So this is definitely, uh, definitely, definitely a great card. Okay, next up we'll have, we go to Smelly Squid with the Silver Umbra. Silver, you say. They're trying to bring the Umbras back, silly, Smelly Squid. Brutally murder. Why does nothing work today? Nothing is working. And we I know it's not uh it's definitely not you guys. For once it's like Matt it's it's stupid Reddit. It's Reddit's fault. Silver Umbra custom mag custom magic. Is this from a year ago? Is this your card? Smelly Squid? Sliver, not, oh, is it Sliver? Oh, I screwed it up, okay. Sliver. Oh, you did say Sliver Umbra. Okay, Sliver Umbra. It still doesn't show up. It didn't change. Nothing changed, damn it. It's the Sliver Umbra. Ugh. It's so annoying. Okay, we're gonna, but well, we're gonna sliver Umbra custom magic. Uncle Google's gonna help us here. Sliver Umbra. I actually can't even find it with Google. Are you sure it's there? You have found it. That was the right card. Was that the, so? It was Silver Umbra. Damn it, where did I go now? So you miss you you it's funny, you you said the wrong card. Oh, I found it anyway. Wow, yeah, that is just dumb. Okay, and then I couldn't find it on Google. But I could find Okay, that was weird. Google can't find it when I look up Sliver Umbra, but I look up Silver Umbra and then this thing shows up. 
Yeah, Google is weird as well. All right, whatever. We got there. Okay, we have a white one generic aura. It's an enchant creature. Enchant creature is a sliver in addition to its other types. And each other sliver you control has all abilities of enchanted... Uh, has all abilities of enchanted creature. Yes, that is totally fine. We spent five minutes looking for a card that is definitely, definitely works. Let me set up some music. This is going to be a long one today, people. This is going to be... We are going to be in for a long show here. Okay, next up, uh, I'm going to do one more bacon cat bug, and we'll go to Majra. Majra has a ton of them. We have the Throat... What is this? Throat Wolf Alpha? Throat Wolf Alpha. What is the point of this search function if I can't search up shit? I can't find a damn thing here. Throat Wolf Alpha. It's like just absolutely pointless today. Uh, custom magic. This is absurd. Oops. Okay, we got Throat Wolf Alpha. Okay. It is a green, red, three generic, four, four. Yeah, I'm, I don't know if I'm cursed. Control F. No, like the most common. The, the it's it's like posted based on recency. <laughs> I've been hacked. I think the, the Reddit's been hacked. Okay, we have a green, red, three generic, four four wolf with vigilance at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep. If Throat Wolf Alpha is untapped, it deals damage equal to its power that player, unless that player sacrifices a creature. Um, to that player. At the beginning of each of oh, at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep. So if I what if I didn't attack, I I effectively have like and has vigilance. So there's like no cost to not attacking. Whenever Throat Wolf Alpha blocks or becomes blocked by a creature, it deals damage equal to its power to that creature, then prevents all combat damage that Throat Wolf Wolf Throat Wolf Alpha would do this combat. This card seems insane. Maybe it's fine. This card actually looks sort of broken, but it's like five mana, so I don't want to judge it that harshly. It's effectively like, it's like an enchantment. Hey, do you want to take four damage or do you want to sack one of your creatures? It's sort of, it's similar to braids in that way. It's got firstest strike. Hold on. Uh, well, you, you want to see the firstest strike one? Well, these are all the same, right? Oh, that's just for. Oh, it gets first to strike before anything else. Yeah, it becomes blocked. It deals damage equal to its power to that creature. Yeah, okay, I understand. Um, but the this whole at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if it's untapped, it deals damage equal to its power to that player unless that player sacks a creature. I can't tell if that's too strong or not. Otherwise, I mean, I guess we'll give it a pass. But it's like, it's just saying, hey, sack a creature. You don't want to sack a creature, you take four damage. Which might be is okay. I don't know. Four damage is not that much damage. No, it's, it's, that's a lot of damage. So it's, it's like it has haste. So I play this, this Throat Wolf Alpha. And like, I immediately dome you for four. If you can't, if you have no creatures on the battlefield, like you're going to die super fast to this card. Throat Wolf Alpha. Throat Wolf was the first MTG meme. What was it? I'm not familiar with the uh, the history of the memes. Okay, moving on. We got Majra. Thank God, Majra has super old cards on super old cards on here. And for now, the fourth and the last part of the Mao's Bay, the first five. Also, artifact is artifact in French. Oh yeah. Not in English. Okay, now for fourth. And the last part of the M. Can we find this thing? Fourth and the last part. Part three by Majra. Okay, hold on. I'm going to go into your history. Do you have the fourth part in here? This is... This is Ari Siegel. I think... We're going to dump Reddit on this show, that's for sure. Where is... Fear and Sun. Sun City. 
Did I see it up here? The day uh, day something disappeared. Sun City, the Sun City. Something. I can't find this damn thing. What is the post called, Majra? What exactly is the post called? Oh, it's and now comma. Hold on. Oh, it's called and now. Hold on. And now comma. Does that help? Oh, four. No, four. And now four. It has to be so damn specific. I can't find this, Madra. Yeah, well, please wait a moment. Like, part of the part of the deal is you give me the exact title, uh, ideally in quotation marks, so I can look it up. Because like even when uh, even when we can't find the damn, sorry, even when we are using exact post names, we still can't find it sometimes. You know what I mean? Okay, I you get back to me. I'm gonna go to some other super chatters for a second. Let's go to Elgot with they suggest Urza's Urza's self. I can't even find this thing. Urza's quotation self. Okay, I'm gonna have to just do go with Reddit. So we've got to go back to Uncle Google. Maybe I should have Uncle Googled uh, for Madra. This is gonna be the longest show because the search function is so busted. Uh, custom magic. The power plant card showed up. Are you talking about this? I no, this this card is not. Um, or you may, or is this a comment, not a card? Can't we just post links to post? No, you can't, because I can't click them. You see, like from uh, this, what's it called? Um, from uh, this client, whenever I click on any of your names, like I can't click on links. Also, YouTube by default like blocks links. But even if you, if I, even if I allowed the links, I can't click on them because when I click on your names, it like just pops up the uh, what's it called uh, your entire post on the screen. I can't actually, you, I, I can't copy and paste anything here. Yeah, I can't click on anything in chat. The search function is so busted on Reddit. We are awaiting Wizards of the Coast to ban. <laughs> It's so broken. So you suggest Urza's self. Was it a new card by any chance? Hold on, let's go. Maybe I, I'll. Maybe we should Control F. Control F. Urza's self. No, nope, can't find it. Urza's self. Maybe I should just do it again. You never know, it might work twice. Did it have an apostrophe? Maybe not. Urza's Folly. Also, sometimes you should make sure that it's actually still there because uh, the mods actually remove cards. No, it's not new. Is it still there though? You're not on new? I know I'm not on new. It's not new anyway. The most hardcore people are still here, so that's okay. We can take our time finding these damn cards. Yeah, is that the name of the post, by the way? It has to be the name of the post, not the card. Because Reddit can't find can, Reddit can't read your picture. Reddit only reads the post of the of the of the thing. That is very important. But I don't think Algod is that new. But maybe. Okay, I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna keep. Uh, Majra, did you were you able to figure out the problem on your post? Is it exactly what it is? Okay, I'm gonna move on to Zykorin, huh? Uh, how come you're on during the day? What about 8 p.m.? Yeah, I'm gonna still be there as well. The thing is, we're gonna I'm gonna be gone from January 10th to I think the 28th is when I come back. I'm gonna be on vacation, so there's gonna be no streams. Yeah, I come back on the 29th. So you're gonna have no streams for a long time. That's why we've been do doubling the streams for the last two and a half weeks. 
And with that super chat, Zykurin, we'll read this one. We'll read the Expanding Void, which is a land, enters the battlefield tapped, and when Expanding Void enters the battlefield, if it isn't a token, create a token that's a copy of it. Oh, you get two Expanding Voids. But it does nothing. Nothing is nothing, but it can still grow into more nothing. Okay, you got... You can sack permanence, I guess. Okay, and now for fourth and the last part. Okay, let's look this thing up. And now for fourth and the last part. Please, please, no. How long ago did you post this? There's so many part fours and everything. And now... I wish I could write Mao's Bay. Well, I'm gonna get that ger German A. I'm gonna try to get um, The things I do to try to find these cards. Yeah, this is, I think this is going to be the last time. We, by When I we come back in the future, it's just all going to be on my Discord. So we'll have to... Oh, we'll make a channel for uh, custom cards. Because this is just getting ridiculous. No, I end, no it's, it's probably not your fault, Majra. Uh, if you can see it, then it's there. I can't copy this, damn it. I believe you. How do I look up a German A? Reading German text for beginners. Where's the damn German A? I can just copy and paste here. Oh my god, why is this so damn hard? How to understand German text. Why was it so much easier last time? Like last week, I could just look one up very easily. You guys cannot see what I'm seeing right now. Hold on. Let's, let's look at this Urza's power plant. You can stare at an Urza's power plant while I look up a German A, which I actually cannot find. This is frustrating as hell. Yeah, three hours later, dot, dot, dot. Emulet, M, M, Laut A. Okay, hold on. M, Laut A. Thank God. Okay, that helped. I'm just going to look up Mao's Bay and hopefully one of these. Okay, mouse. Please stop posting and like in these uh, awkward uh, texts. Mouse bay. Hopefully this shows all your mouse bay uh, posts. It doesn't have part four. That's the problem. Part four is just not here. And now for the last. Now and now for the fourth and last part of the mouse bay. Can you see it? Can you look it up yourself? Are you seeing it yourself? Maybe it's been hidden by the mods. Because you only have part two, part three, part three. And then that's it. It disappears. It's there. Maybe it's only there for you. Like, maybe it's hidden by Reddit. Maybe that's the problem. May yeah, maybe mods shadow bound, uh, shadow banned it. If you posted it, like, see, the thing is, like, they will, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, they don't like it when you post too many things in a tight manner. Like this, I'm looking them all up. These are all the mouse bays. And I did see this one, this one. I didn't see this one. Did we see this one? No, we did just see this one. Yeah, the change of destiny. The fourth one doesn't exist. They might have shadow banned this card. Mods are silly. Nikachu live. Google... Uh, Google that? I don't understand. 18... So 
Sorry for all the super chatters from like a long time. Okay, hold on. 529HV custom MTG. You mean custom MTG or custom magic? Okay, I found it. Yeah, actually, thank you very much. Bacon Catbug has hacked the universe. I have no idea how you found that. <laughs> the mods have been removed from my Christmas card list. Maybe it's not, maybe it has nothing to do with the mods and it just has everything to do with Reddit. But this is getting so clunky. Like this, the show was actually fine for an eternity. And then all of a sudden, like Reddit just doesn't work anymore. Like looking things up just doesn't work, period. And like you, just as you say, it is end now for the fourth and last part of the mouse bay. Sure, okay. Okay, I'm gonna do this one, and then I'm just doing everybody's $2 super chats, and then we'll end uh, with your stuff, Majra. Okay, red, red, one generic. Artifact, equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus zero. Equipped creature has double strike if it's red. When enraged claymore is cast by its miracle, if it, it may enter the battlefield attached to a creature but you control. That is totally fine. Totally playable. So this is just for the first five cards. Deal! Okay, green, blue, two generic for three, one, cat, rogue, cleric. Uh, when you cast Rava's Kanushi by its miracle, it gains haste until end of turn. When Rava's Kanushi deals combat damage to a player or battle, you may shuffle a card from the defending player's hand into their library. And if you do, shuffle Rava Kanushi to their owner's hand. I think that is also fine, right? You may shuffle a card from their hand into their library. It's like weird hand. It's like discard, but it doesn't actually get discarded. We have Augur's Orb! Three mana. When Augur's Orb is cast for its miracle, draw a card. Uh, if the card drawn has a miracle cost, you cast for its mir You can cast it for its miracle cost. I feel like I just don't like this mechanic. Like, you're just like, okay, let's just chain like a bunch of cre cards together. If you like stack your deck with a bunch of these miracle cards, you can like draw three or four cards a turn. I think that's a little I think that's a bit broken especially since you can miracle for zero so either make the miracle cost something or get rid of that ability because that is that could just be broken you have so many of these miracle for zero cards well I will just stack my deck with sensei's divining top and then play everything at once and that is just a little too much so it's like every single one of those miracles will like miracle into another miracle little too broken and there's a lot of deck manipulation, especially with this one. See, you get to scry one when it enters the battlefield. You have a lot of other scrying mechanics that'll just like play your entire deck in one shot. Whenever you scry or surveil, you may reveal the top card of your library. When you do draw, uh, draw a card, if you reveal a land, otherwise make a treasure token. So I do believe that these... I, I, I think the whole concept of like miracling into other miracle cards, too strong. Especially since the miracle cost is zero. If you gave it a cost, maybe it wouldn't be so bad. Slice Rage Katana, a red equipment. Uh, Equip creature gets plus one, plus zero, and has Bushido. First strike if it's red. And you can also cast it for its miracle. Uh, it enters the battlefield attached to a creature you control. It also has Equip for two. That is fine. Even though it could be a zero mana equipment. But it's not like the most broken equipment out there, so. Plus one, plus zero. First strike. Bushido one. Not gonna kill us. We have a green one generic. Uh, what is it? Hit? Null Mace. Equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one. Equipped creature has trample if it's green. When you cast Hit Null Mace by its miracle, you may, it may <clears throat> enter the battlefield attached to a creature you control. Equipped for two and a miracle for a green. That is also fine. All legal equipment. All right. Let's get to these. Now I feel bad for Algot. Algot probably has Urza self somewhere out there, but we can't find it. Just because it's so stupid. Okay, I'll try Urza Self later again. We'll go with Bacon Catbug. Bacon Catbug's cards all work. Thank God. Forbidden Altar. Forbidden Altar. An adaptation from Shadowverse. Nope. Okay, well. That didn't work at all. Custom magic, please. There we go. This is it. This is it. It looks like, uh, what's it called? Uh, Google is the new Reddit search. It's funny how Google does that. 
Okay, Forbidden Altar, that is done. We got a Forbidden Altar for a black, black, one generic. It's an artifact with ba Vanishing of Four. I'm surprised no one, they didn't even bring Vanishing back as a mechanic. Spectral Maniac, finally, I'm not the only one doing Shadowverse cards. You got a buddy all of a sudden. Okay, we got, uh, whenever Forbidden Altar is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, destroy all creatures. Oh my goodness. Then we can evoke for a black, black, four generic. Why is the evoke so strong? Oh, that's right. So you're using it as a sweeper. Otherwise, for three mana, you actually have to find a way to actually sack this card. That is definitely a very cool card. Actually, very, very unique and interesting. It's like reverse evoke. You can cast it for real for three mana, but, uh... You really want the you actually want to evoke it onto the battlefield so it leaves so you have to pay more Bacon cat bug with another banger. Sorry for the spam. That's okay. Uh, imperfect mini cry Sorry me Mimi cry version 2 Thank God It shows up What is this? Oh no, where where did I put that Mao's Bay card? Hold on, okay. Uh, I'll just do the imperfect Mimi cry here. So for a, uh, is it instant, copy target instant or sorcery spell you don't control. You can't choose new targets for the copy. Oh, and that's it. I think this would be great. I think this is a banger card. I think actually like Legacy and Modern could use this card. You could pay a blue to counter counter spells with this thing. You can pay a red if someone wants to burn me. No, burn yourself. I, I guess the problem is Maybe it needs to be like copy, target, insta, or sorcery spell you don't control with mana value three or less. Because if you can copy like a six mana card that's probably broken, that's, pr yeah, it's probably too strong. Um, yeah, it's probably too strong. It probably just has to be adjusted that you can't, oh, you can't pick new, well, you can't, oh, you can't choose new targets for the copy. But then like some cards are just like draw seven cards, right? So you don't need to even like change the, Oh, so like, okay, so we can't counter a counter spell because we can't choose new targets for the copy. I don't know why you have to have that in reminder text. It probably should specifically say copy target instant or sorcery spell you don't control, um, comma, you can't choose new targets for the copy. I just have a feeling like you can copy just something outrageously big. But I guess you can't redirect counter spells, you can't redirect burn spells, you can't redirect like kill spells. So basically if someone else used a kill spell on a creature, that player countered it, I guess you can copy it. Okay, maybe the, I have no idea if this could be busted in practice. We'll give it, we'll give it a pass though. Search Urza self with the S, with the possibly S on Google, it's the first picture. Okay, I'll look it up. Okay, hold on, where's the mouse bay card set? I don't want to go too far from the mouse bay. I don't know how to find that thing again. There we go. I'm back. Okay, so now we're looking up Urza's self on Google. I should, just in case we see inappropriate things. It's the first picture? It is not the first picture. You mean Urza's command? Okay, so you guys can see this. The, I don't see anything here. Where is Urza's self? Urza's self. Urza's self. What am I supposed to look up exactly? Did you say just Urza's self or us? Urza's self custom? Custom MTG. Hold on. Okay. I have to keep switching. You never know what like stupid thing is going to pop up on Google. Um, these all seem fine. But I can't find it. Oh, in double quotes? Oh, is that the problem? Oh no, was that, we couldn't find it because it had double quotes around it? Okay, hold on. Thank you very much. Uh... Okay, I found it. But did it go there? It doesn't like take me anywhere. Hold on. 
it's not on custom magic is what's the problem it's on some different completely it's in a completely different uh place on reddit that's all yeah hold on i'm trying to open link in new tab it won't even open the oh no i don't want to open link open image open image in new tab okay i found it okay i found it so we now know what the problem was this wasn't even posted in custom magic Please post your cards in custom mat. It was posted on like uh, from from the outside. It looks like it was posted on some random area of Reddit, which I'm not looking for. Okay, so Urza self. It is a legendary land planeswalker, which is that's broken. Uh, plus one until end of turn. Lands you control gain tap. Add a colorless. Also minus two until end of turn. Lands you control tap. Add double colorless. Oh my goodness. This is getting worse the more we read it. And then, uh, minus seven, you get an emblem with lands you control, have, tap, search your library for an artifact card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. But that's actually a little bit hard to pull off, so we can give that a plus. But overall, this is a negative ten on, uh, this card. It is so supremely broken! It is a land planeswalker! This is of AI-generated origin, as far as I'm concerned. It's beyond stupidly powerful. Yes, yeah, so, okay, I'll play my land for the turn. It's Urza's self. Oh, yeah, because, like, Urza... Oh, it's a... Did someone just make this or something? Urza's Urza? We, we were just talking about the Urza's land type. Why is uh, land in its type? Because, like, we were just talking about earlier how, like, Urza's tower, Urza's mine, Urza's power plant. Oh, my God, this is ridiculous. This is just, like, a sort of a... Like a joke on the joke that we were talking about earlier. Like, Urza's can't be a land type. Well, it can when it's Urza's self. I couldn't find Urza's self either, so how about... No, I found it! It's here! For each type, a card that supports it, Urza, uh, Urza's, which isn't, uh, isn't that, but it's cool. No, here it is! We found, we found it! We found Urza's self. Was this the card, though? Or is this some other random card on Reddit? I'm assuming this is the card. Okay, I can finally put a rest to Urza's self. All right, Bacon, Catbug, Drazel. Uh, I guess, like, I don't know when you guys are posting with quotations, because quotations will also screw it up. Draz Drazel. Now, I'm just looking that up. That sounds unique enough. No, oh, can't even find it. D-R-A-Z-A-E-L. Unbelievable trash. Read it is. Custom magic. Ravening Enforcer. You have this on the Shadowverse portal. Oh, no, hold on. No, this is not it. Is this something else? Okay, I found it. Drizelle, Ravening Enforcer, a black, 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 four generic, five, eight, Dragon God, Yu-Gi-Oh card. Look at all that text. Can't be destroyed except by lethal damage. Oh, so it's like it's you're either going to take eight or nothing. That is actually quite unique. And then when Drazel enters the battlefield, creatures your opponent's control get minus five, minus five until end of turn, and you gain five life. Get a little life out of there. Um, it's so it's like a sweeper. For the smaller creatures channel for black 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 uh discard draziel for target creature gets minus five minus five until end of turn you fear imperfection you languish in ignorance in ignorance hiding your incompetence with bravado i actually think this is a perfectly playable card yeah reddit is hella broken today to hell with reddit i gotta take i gotta take things into my own hands is this a shadowverse card i heard shadowverse is like another card game but with better art, like you people seem to like the art. You make card, you make magic cards out of their art. So if we're gonna, we're gonna have any, we're gonna have many magic. <laughs> One day there will be a shadow verse, uh, secret lair of some sort, maybe. That'd be so weird to have a crossover with like two competing card games, like Yu-Gi-Oh and Magic. That would just be bizarre. Okay, we got Oli with a Beehive version two. I'm not even going to try on Reddit today. It just doesn't work. Beehive version 2 custom magic.
Okay, I think it worked immediately. Uncle Google doesn't disappoint. We got a two meta artifact with kicker of one. We also tap, pay one, create a food token. What's the kicker for? When Beehive enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, it deals one damage to each player and each creature. Okay, be, be honest. Did you make this card? Be honest. Be honest. This looks AI generated all the way through. Open AI. I think you used open AI for the art. I also think you use open AI for the card. It looks, it feels very AI generated. So it's like you pay to get a kicker of one. And there's a battlefield if it was kicked, it deals one damage to each player and each creature. Like maybe? I guess you could have made this thing. Usually the AI doesn't have good flavor for the, the card name. This one matches a little bit too much, but it feels very, very AI like. If you kick the hive, you get sting. Oh my god! That is amazing! Yeah, you, you gave it a kicker. You kick the beehive. So you kick the hive, you piss them off. Okay, do you know what? 10 out of 10. That was This is a banger card. I like the flavor all around. And it makes food. Yeah, not the bees. Pay kicker to trouble the bees. Bee stung! A diblick. Don't diblick enough. You know what? It's Zybers for me. I, all of a sudden, I'm a huge fan of the beehive. Yeah, I didn't I didn't get the joke at first. Yeah, sometimes when I look something up on Google, sometimes Rule 38 for art pops up. I understand. Yeah, I gotta be careful here. I, gotta, I don't know what's gonna show up. I, I trust the mods are gonna have, like, a clean custom Reddit magic. I can't trust Google on that. You never know what's gonna show up on that Reddit. You said on Google. Google shows anything these days. Okay, bacon cat bug. Uh, with uh, all of a sudden we've got the nameless, a riff of the nameless race. And again, I go the nameless, a uh, riff of name, nameless race custom magic. Google is like 9 for 10 today. Okay, it is a uh, 3... It's a, it's a black, black, 1 generic. 3, 2 creature with disavowed. This card has no creature types. But it's called a human monk. Okay, anyway, it's got ward, pay 3 life. Creatures your opponents control. Uh, lose all creature types and can't gain creature types. No, not my merfolk. Okay, um... Oh, Algot is like 15 minutes behind the stream. This was the card? Alright, good. Thumbs up! Alright! Very nice! Urza Self. Wasn't even posted on Custom Magic! Couldn't even find the damn thing. Okay, creatures your opponents control lose all creature types. They can't gain creature types, so my merfolk are screwed. So are the elves and goblins. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, this controller loses one life. This is actually an interesting card. It's a bit, it's a bit anti kindred card. Super anti kindred card. A race without a name, haunting the fringes of the Forgotten Realms. So this is an alternate version of it. Oh, it's just different templating. Different art style. Kankusha! Bro's foot reveal when? I don't know. Uh, when he wants to reveal them. I think his, whoops, I think his feet are for cheap. Okay, that was... Super Chat with no card, so we will donate it to One Man's Trash! One Man's Trash is a black, blue, one generic enchantment. Pay to uh, exile target artifact card from an opponent's graveyard. Create a treasure token. Wow! Oh, but it's only artifacts. But still, that's a very unique card. You turn, yeah, turn trash into treasure. All right, now we get to the second half. Uh, the, the, the last four cards or whatever. The Mouse Bay. Where is your Mouse Bay cards? Here we go. And we're going to do the Sigil cards. We've got ten cards for the Majra here. Majra loves the custom shows. Okay, green one generic equipment. Equip creature gets plus one, plus one. Also, equip creature has trample if it's green. If you cast the hit null mace... Oh, no, this is, we did this one, right? This was the first five. Okay, move on to number six. The, the Shinigami of the Coast. It's a blue, blue, one generic cat with a bunch of skulls. It's a cat spirit war warlock. Um, go on, Reddit, get out of here. Well, maybe I gotta... Make this a little bit smaller. There we go. Reddit giving me problems. 
So many problems today. Cat Spirit Warlock. It's a 3-3 Vigilance creature. Whenever Shinigami of the Coast deals combat damage to a player or battle, you may tap target creature, then put a stun counter on it. And if you do, shuffle uh, back into your this card back into your library. Whenever this card or another cat you control is uh, shuffled into its owner's library, shuffle target non-land permanent into its owner's library. Oh my god! The last part could be insane. Don't Then don't you get two triggers? Whenever this card... If you do shuffle Shimigami, oh no no, you don't, you only get one trigger. So you stun something, then you're gonna bounce something else. Uh, shuffle into its owner's library. Shuffle target non-land permanent to its owner's. Oh, it's a non-land. It's still very very strong. So we exchange this creature for another creature. Oh, but it has to be shuffled. All right, so it's one for one. It's an eye for an eye. I can get behind that. It's got miracle for a blue blue. We got Ashura of the Coast. What is this? Are these like all like a play on Wizards of the Coast? This is a red red, one generic 3-3 three, three cat spirit warrior worth first strike. When it deals combat damage to a player or battle, you may put any number of cards from your hand on the bottom of your library, then draw that many cards. Very strong. If you do, shuffle Ashura of the, co uh, of the Coast into its owner's library at the beginning of the next end step. Whenever you assure the coast or another cat you control is shuffled into its owner's library, it deals two damage to each opponent. I think this is okay. It's like three mana. You can potentially like give yourself a whole new hand, though. That's a problem. Okay, Andira of the Coast. It's a three mana, three, three cat monk. Trample. Uh, when it deals combat damage to a player or battle, you may exile up to three cards in any graveyard and gain two life for each creature card exiled this way. If you do... Shuffle and Deer of the Coast into its owner's library at the beginning of the next end step. And of course, if this or another cat enters the battlefield uh, by its miracle, put a, sh oh, put a shield counter on it? Oh, that's a bit different. So if this or anything else, it comes with a shield counter. Combat damage, you may exile three cards, gain two life. This is super fair. Easy pass. Coastal Village. It's an island you can fetch. You can add a blue. Enters the battlefield tapped unless you reveal a cat from your hand. Or you can, oh, it's a three, so it's like a tri-land. But you can't fetch it out unless, uh, you can only fetch out only islands. It's actually a fixed tri-land in a lot of ways. I love it for a cat deck, but that is busted. You like all the busted cards? Luca, Calamity of the Mouse Bay. Uh, it is a two mana, one three, Bushido, one cat, ro cat rogue samurai. Whenever a creature you control with power uh, or toughness one or less attacks, Luka deals one damage to any target. That's totally fine as well. Okay, next up. Uh, we're going to look at... Oh, God. Algot has another uh, another card. All right. What do you got for us this time, Algot? Secret Lair Drop Series Urza's Eyewear. I'm not going to take my chances. We're just going to Google it. Secret... Layer drop series Urza's Eye Wear. Custom Magic. I hope it's in Custom Magic. This one's in Custom Magic. Thank God. Oops, too big. Because there was, like, the Urza's glasses, right? Like, you know, I don't know, planes turn into mountains or something like that. Okay, or you can tap it for red mana. Okay, we have a white one generic artifact. At the beginning of your upkeep, put an additional accessory. Uh, if you can't sacrifice nose glasses of Urza? What? Oh, these are no... This is, like, you know, the fake glasses. Like, imposter glasses. Creatures can't attack you or planeswalkers you control unless their controller pays one for each of those creatures with an additional accessory you wear. So basically, it's a silver border card. You want a silver border card? Sure, you can do that. It's not particularly powerful. We've got the Urza's Eye Patch, a blue one generic artifact. If it's neither day nor night, it becomes day as Urza's Eye Patch enters the battlefield. Are we changing from day to night here? You may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may look at the you may look at any card whose back is facing you instead as long as it's night. What the hell? The Urza's Eye Patch. You can see everything. Can you even see into the future. Once I dreamt I was a pirate, sailing and impaling to all in intents and purposes a pirate. Now I don't know whether I was then an artificer dreaming I was a pirate or whether I am now a pirate dreaming I am an artificer. 
some sort of identity cri identity crisis of Urza. Urza's VR headset. Oh my goodness. This just got this got out of control. Urza. I would love to make this the thumbnail of the show, but like it would take people two hours, nine minutes, and nine seconds to see it. Okay, three mana artifact. Equipped creature can attack players in silver border games you're not playing in. Oh my goodness. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player in a silver border game you're not playing in, draw cards equal to its power. You go attack someone somewhere else and you draw cards out of it. That's wild. <laughs> You'll finish watching later. All right, take care. All right, next up, we've got Will Anderson with Paste Land. Some people are just, they just want one card. Okay, let's, please, please, Reddit, please. Thank God. This is it? I hope this is it, Will Anderson. We have a Paste Land. How long ago? It was 11 days. What are the odds this is not Will Anderson? Not good. Okay, it is for a Simic. Uh, aura, Enchant Basic Land. Enters the battlefield, search your library for a non-legendary land card, exile it, then shuffle your library. Enchanted land has all types and abilities of all cards exiled with paste land in addition to its basic land type. What the hell does this card do? I looked for a non-legendary land, I exiled it, and then it has all types and abilities of the card exiled. So I can look up... Or non legend So yeah, I can look up things like um, Wasteland, for example, and then I can sack it as though it is like Wasteland. Probably not a good ability, but I can't get Guy's Cradle. That has that's legendary. But I see the idea. The idea is totally fine. Copy paste. Yeah, it's copy paste land. That's right. Copy pasta. It pastes the exiled land onto a land on the battlefield. We traced around it. Can't get Urborg. Urborg is legendary. Does Dark Depths? Nope. Dark Depths is also legendary. It's gotta be, look for a lot. Non-legendary land. Non-legendaries, people. Can't even be Nykthos for crying out loud. Uh, it can be, it can be Valakut. Has all types and abilities of cards. Yeah, you can uh, definitely get, it can definitely get Valakut. Bacon Cat Bug. Sabastus the something. Sabastus. I don't even know how you. Sp I'm hoping it's IV. Hold on. Oh, I was able to find it. Thank God. Reddit's working again. Thank God. Okay, we got Sebastus, the Iron Cage. It's a. It's actually a black one. I will have to zoom out a little bit. It's a black, black three generic. Battle six, six battle loyalty or something. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, it's a Bastion. At the beginning of your upkeep, amass Demon's X, and you lose two life, where X is the number of defense counters on Seba Sebastus for the Iron Cage. Um, is there not a second side to this? Don't the battles always turn into something? I actually don't know. Armies you control have Decayed and Trample. Okay, that's totally cool. I don't think this is broken whatsoever. Does it work? It's five mana. At the beginning of upkeep, amass demons X, and you lose to his life for X's the number of defense counters on Sebastus. Oh, they're defense counters. Defense. A good defense is a good offense. A lot of reminder text on this, but it is very doable. Okay, Algot has another. You, you've, you've got a taste of custom magic, haven't you, Algot? You got a taste of custom magic. You can't get. Okay, so for each type. A card supports it, number 48, Urza. Hold on, is that, are you making a comment on the card that you talked about earlier? Okay, I'm going to, I'm assuming this is a super chat for looking up another card. For each type, a card that supports it, number 48, custom magic. Okay, I found it. I would not dare even try. Uh, whoops. Urza's Interior Designer. A blue one generic zero two a human art major. Lands you control, but Urza owns have hex proof. I don't even know what that means. That is just like a very sad wording. 
Lands you control, but Urza owns have ex have hexproof. I really struggle on how to word this one. Like Urza's? Oh, it's like, it's another joke within itself. This was posted three years ago. This is very, very, very old. It's not my own card, but I think it's cool. Well, Q Blaine will be very happy that their card got resurrected three years later. Blaine, if you're listening, let us know if uh, you caught this. I didn't know that there was like such a subculture about that knew that Urza's, that, I don't know, the whole Urza's land type is weird. Urza's apostrophe S. Really struggled how to word this one. Like Urza's apostrophe SS? Exactly. Lands owned by Urza have hexproof, I guess. Uh, anyway, yeah, very awkward. Awkwardly worded card. Okay, Madra. We save the best for last, don't we here? Now that you've seen them all, all, all the cards from the Mouse Bay, I'll just show you the cards I got from the Bird deck. Airy Sigil. Okay, that one I know shows up. Air... We've seen it a few times. Aries. Sigil. All five of them. Let's go take a look. Okay, Airy Sigil. We got a black, blue, white, one generic enchantment. If it's in your opening hand, you can begin with it on the battlefield. So it's a uh, it's Ares Ares Leyline Leyline of the Ares Seagull. Whenever an opponent casts their second spell each turn, reanimates target bird card with mana valid three or less. Reanimates technically not a keyword. It's just return target bird card f uh, with mana valid three or less from the graveyard to the battlefield. Honestly, I like how you worded it. It's probably how wizards should template it. Reanimate should be like easy enough to understand. Whenever a bird dies, surveil one. Very fair. Hold on, is this fair? Whenever an opponent casts their second spell each turn, reanimate target bird. Well, if you have nothing in your graveyard, then, like, nothing bad's gonna happen. What's the flavor text? Veyu's idea of persistence. Yes, they will persist. The Joyful Strix is a blue Azorius white 1-3 bird. Flash flying lifelink. Enters the battlefield, exile target non-creature spell an opponent controls until Joyful Strix leaves the battlefield. And when it dies, return exile card back to its own- Oh, to their owner's hand, so it doesn't even come back into play. It's pretty strong, but it's also one power, so very, very playable. They probably could make a card like that. It's a black uh, Orzov White 1 3 bird spirit called Spiteful Strix. It's gonna spite you. It's got flash, flying, and death touch. It's gonna get you. It's gonna get you. You play that, you attack, and all of a sudden, Spiteful Strix. And then you realize, oh, it's got death touch too. Oh, well, I'm screwed. So, uh, when it dies, you can exile it. If you do, reanimate target bird card with mana value 3 or less from a graveyard. So, when it, di when it dies, you can exile it. You can so, when it dies, you can bring back something for 3 mana. I have a feeling these chain, like, really well. When there's a battlefield target, non-creature spell. Oh, but you can only exile cards from your opponent. Okay. This combo is really well with the other cards, though. Sorrowful Strix. It's a uh, black... Uh, Demir Blue 1-3 Bird Spirit with Flash, Flying, and Wither. Uh, when it enters the battlefield or dies, target opponent, exile, exile a card from their hand unless you draw a card. Unless you draw a card and surveil one. So what, you like, can enter the bat. So it should just be, you know what, you worded it weird. It should just be, like, when it enters the battlefield, choose one. Um, the opponent exiles a card from their hand or you draw a card, surveil one. You, you have it, like, worded in, like, a really confusing way. Because you have, it's like one or the other, right? So it's just one of those choose one cards. And then we have Ares Bauble. Uh, by the way, the other card is fine. It's a three mana kindred artifact bird. When it when it enters the battlefield, choose one. Fate seal one, surveil two. You gain three life. Sacrifices Ares Bauble, draw two cards. You may activate this ability only if a bird died this turn and it is not your turn. Oh, I see. So you can sack it if something died. That is probably also fine. Three mana to draw two cards with the uh, add-on that you have to kill the creature? That totally works. The choice is the opponent's. Enters the battlefield or dies. Target opponent exiles a card from their hand unless you draw a card and surveil one. I think it's you're choosing it. Like basically target opponent is going to exile a card from their hand unless I want to draw a card and surveil one, right? 
Long stream? Oh, you better believe it. And it actually just got longer thanks to Luciano with, uh, what do we got? Seb Sebastus5, the Iron Cage. You missed the reminder text that said you defend it and your opponents attack it. Do I have that around here? Oh, this is like a reverse battle? Uh, you protect Bastion. Opponents can attack it. Oh! Oh, I see. Interesting. So you get the benefits. Yeah, armies you control. Because usually you're giving the battle to somebody else. Which I always thought was a weird mechanic. Probably this is just how it should have been in the first place. But he wanted to make it a battle. You were attacking something. Thank you very much for actually clearing that up. Alright, this card is even more inter- uh, The card got even more interesting. But this did not specify a magic card. So we are going to donate it to the uh, freebie section. Whoops. Okay, another freebie. We saw that one. We've seen all these. Okay, we're going to spin the roulette wheel. And we fall on Glow Sand. It is a two mana aura. Enchant Desert you control. When Glow Sand enters the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls until Glow Sand leaves the battlefield. We enchant a desert? So we exile a creature. This is such, it's like a chain in the rocks, right? Chain to the rocks, but for colorless. It's a colorless chain to the rocks, but you have to put on a desert. And you will uh, experience the nothingness of the, the sorry, hold on, the, the land. The land promises nothing, and it keeps its promise. Do siege battles exist yet? I, do non-siege battles exist yet? I don't think so. So that was a very unique battle back there. Oh my god, it's it! Holy thank god. Battles spe uh, don't specify which player defends it. The subtype does. Ah, interesting. All right. Well, that's it for Coffee and MTG today. Thank god. This is a record. This is a long. It's only long because Reddit was broken. And this is probably the last time we're going to be looking up cards on Reddit. So F it. Uh, but if you want to be part of Coffee and MTG, you got to be here weekdays, 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, wait. We have a few announcements. First one. The, the, we're still going to have evening shows at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time until January 5th. But i got to warn you all, I, I'm going to be on vacation from January 10th to the 27th. I'll be back. Coffin MTG will return on the January 29th. There will be no show for two and a half weeks. I don't know what you'll do while I'm gone. But I thank everyone who supports the channel up to now. And I hope you'll be back when I'm back. Uh, thanks everyone who supports the channel on Patreon, their members on YouTube, or you Super Chat to be part of the show. Because you guys are the show. And we can't forget the people who are here every morning. People like Darkest Angel, of course Majra for the custom magic shows, Toads, Aquain Boy, Xander, Stanel. We got uh, Spectral Maniac, Kankusha, Toads, Bacon, Catbug, Steve Cooper, Platonic Liquid, Epic, Nate, Algot, Luciano. We got Jacob. Jacob's been probably like lurking the entire time. And Darkest Angel, of course, because you guys are the show. So as usual, my coffee crew. Keep brewing up them coffees, and we'll keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you at the next cup.